Rock, Kobe. Step Show them why we got three rings. Step back, step back, Sauce Man. Step back. Show them why we got three of them rings in our line. Security, Show get them behind Kobe. the line, security. It's not a dream. It's not a dream, y'all. What's the deal? What's the deal? We are back for volume three of Deconstructed. Uh, missing the guys, AJ and Larry here, but that's okay. You know what I'm saying? We got a very, very, very special guest. Um, first of all, y'all know each uh, episode of Deconstructed has been focused on covering specific icons in the basketball world or the footwear world for that matter. That, that But basketball specifically has been our focus this year um, that have – just made an impact on the culture in ways that we feel like deserves a conversation outside of the norm of what they've done. Um, obviously, you know, we did uh, Michael Jordan and the Jordan one, but when we did it, it wasn't just the approach of the quasi hype beast uh, approach of the Jordan one. It was really got down to what Mike did on the court colorways and really kind of what just gravitated toward Mike and what made him a legend. And then of course our last episode was about, the great Anthony Hardaway, Penny Hardaway, uh, or uh, you know, Nike basketball legend, uh, a legend in in the basketball space, who weirdly enough doesn't really get his just due. But we're going to talk about a um, polarizing icon today. Um, obviously, y'all see, I got my Lakers cap. Absolutely, this is the Black Mamba edition, fifty nine fifty. They did when they retired his um, his his jersey in twenty seventeen in December. I had to scoop that up, but. Um, you know, you know what we're here for. So I had to tap in with my guy, very, very, very special individual. And, you know, somebody that I really feel embodies everything about the Mamba mentality, not just from the aspect of, oh, I got a lot of shoes, but it's just genuinely a good dude and works hard at whatever he does. So um, you've seen him on numerous platforms before. I'm very excited to have this guest and thank you for your time before I even bring you up. Um, my man, Daryl, brother D out of uh, the tri-state area, man. Daryl, what's the word? Yo, bro, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you reaching out. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on here, man. Always a pleasure to talk Kobe's, talk shoes, talk sneakers, man. Talk, you know, talk the culture, talk basketball. So uh, thanks for yes, having sir. me. Man, I appreciate you, bro. So, um, you know, we're here to honor and talk about the late, great Kobe Bryant. Obviously, his birthday is coming up, and this will actually be released um, in between his birthday and, of course, uh, the monumental dates, 824, which is Kobe Day. Not yep. like Mamba Day is uh, 413. Kobe yep. Day is 824. So, yes, uh, yep. he's, Kobe is just, man, look, you got <laughs> out of the month of August, we had 81024 this year, which yeah, was yeah, the gold yeah. medal game, which, yep. come on, could could that have been any yep. better? And then <laughs> got 82324, which is – his number, his idol's number, and his other number, and then 824-24. This is just – yeah. <laughs> this is the year of the Kobe, man. This is the year for of Kobe. Sure. We're going to talk about that. Um, sure. So thank you for coming on. I want to start out uh, with the icebreaker for those because they know me. They, You know what I'm saying? They, they've seen me. They know. They've seen this face a million times. Yeah. What got you started in sneakers, and why Kobe Bryant specifically was he the one for you? Uh, what got me in the sneakers to be honest, what got me in my sneakers? My my brother in law was a DJ, he used to DJ for um, for Bad Boy, and he used to have like every color Air Force One, man. Um, so always seeing him with those different shoes. But I think the one shoe that really got me in the shoes, and like my all time favorite shoes, the Air Jordan 13. And I remember when the movie He Got Game came out, 
I remember like going to school one day. I always tell this story all the time. I, I went to school one day and like everybody in my class had the Air Jordan 13. I was like literally the only person in my class, maybe south side of maybe two other people who who weren't really hip or savvy into fashion. And I remember going home like, man, I got to get these 13s. You go, like, we got to go to the mall. She, she kept putting it off. We finally went to the mall. They sold out of my, they sold out of my size. I ended up getting a pair of Grant Hills. But, but you know, that shoe was like the, the shoe that really kind of just like, really like mesmerized, was mesmerizing and really kind of just like grabbed a hold of me. And that's, that's the one shoe that kind of like really like made me fell in love with sneakers and made me want to like track like what, you know, what these athletes are wearing, you know, what's a signature shoe, you know, all the different sneaker brands that really just kind of just took me to a whole nother level of love and passion and, you know, made me research everything and like really sparked the love inside of me to maybe want to, you know, dress different, look different and, and really kind of had me inside what, you know, what it is to, to, to be an athlete and have a shoe and what it was to be a consumer and look for a shoe and where a shoe would be at and, you know, all those things. Uh, for sure. I can appreciate that, man. Um, you know, for me, it starts with the athlete as well. Uh, that's just what it is. Don't get me wrong. Coming up, especially in the time we came up, above all else, you wanted to get fly. Um, sure. That's just the reality of it. But getting fly at that time was, you know, wearing those things that we wore, like wearing, you know, jerseys, sneakers, and so on and so forth. But it always yeah. starts from the shoe up. And you mentioned that Grand Hill. Listen, I had the Grand Hills in 97. So I want to yeah. say that was the the grant two yep if i'm honest, i think that was a grant two yep. so yeah i had them they were uh white navy and red i i, mm -hmm. I specifically remember with the honeycomb on the side i specifically remember those like yeah it's crazy but um you know first of all where, where'd you grow up pleasantville new jersey so a small okay. city in new jersey on the uh, south side of new jersey uh on the south side of uh my city right. on southern side of the state and okay. not too far from Philadelphia. So literally all my friends are Iverson fans. So like literally probably 40 minutes from Philly, maybe a little less than a little less than Philadelphia. Okay. So uh, you know, all my friends were, were, were Iverson fans. Everybody went to Sixers games, Eagles fans. That that's that's where I'm from. Okay. Word, word, word. Yeah, no, nah, my pops from North. So yeah, I'm oh, very, yeah, you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very familiar with, with <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh definitely. Shout out to Jers. Um but you know, in Philly too, for that matter, because it's it's, yes. it's right, there. Um, right there. But yeah, so so you know, I know that there's cliche conversations of all oh, the top tens that, and, and we, that's fine. We can do that. But for those of us who really do this, we getting into it today. For so sure. uh, first things first, what was the moment that made you say, "Nah, Kobe is the man"? Because before we get into the sneakers, it was. It was on court. What was the moment that made you say Kobe is the man? I I I'll let you go first, and I'm gonna try to tell my my story. Oh man, uh, my Kobe was the man moment. I say probably the end of the first title run, but definitely like that 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 back to back. You know, yeah. navigating through through the playoffs, watching you know, watching him dominate because you know, everybody looks at Shaq's stats and like you know, obviously like no disrespect for, to Shaq, he was extremely dominant, one of the most dominant players ever to you know touch a basketball. You know, a lot the way that the Lakers was set up, it was kind of like you know, Kobe was really like that guy that was was was, was the facilitator, was the score, mm -hmm. and then you know when when they when it was like all right, like let's really like get this going, they dump it in the Shaq, but Kobe was really like. That perimeter really like that defender. Yep. He, you know, he got the ball when it needed to be. When they need, when they need, like, yo, go get a bucket real quick. They double team and they triple team. They, they, you know, they doing shack, you know, hack a shack. Mm -hmm. That's go get a couple buckets real quick. You know, Kobe was that guy, and you know, to see him really dominate both ends of the floor and really come into his own. Um, right. You know, like when he first came, he was a real like a raw like a raw talent, and to really see him like navigate you know, navigate his way through the league and really kind of like each year add different elements to his game and really like climb the ladder. Right. And each year really just kind of get better and better until like, you know, once those 2000s hit, it was, he really just like, you know, turned that switch on and really kind of dominated and just to watch him, you know, from the first title run to really like that second, that second 
back to back year really kind of just dominate everything that was in his way and you really kind of couldn't do nothing with him on both ends of the floor so th that was probably really my coming his coming of age to me and really when I was kind of like yo he really one of those ones and he really gonna like make he about to make some noise like really just watch out and get out the way so <laughs> I'm gonna tell you mine um mine is a little earlier than the title run mm -hmm. if you remember when Kobe got drafted they put him every and I mean yeah. everywhere possible, yeah. especially yeah. he was kind of the first high schooler of that era. Not to say the guys like Garnett and even back to uh, Moses Malone didn't happen, but it felt like the culture was pushing. It was like the first kid out of high school that was like the kid for real. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, while I know guys had commercials, when I seen him on the cover of them sprite uh vending machines and stuff sure. like that it was like oh okay that. all right and yeah. i remember i was in atlanta uh yeah. i'll never get i was a kid i was in atlanta and um we were at six flags so if you know anything about uh atlanta that's a big coca-cola uh uh area stuff like that matter of fact it's really where their headquarters are mm -hmm. so in the six flags they had the coke machine sprite machine all that kind of, and cold was on there and i want to say I know you had on black and white sneakers, so I'm gonna credit this to Crazy Eights, but it might yeah. have been the the uh, EQT. Um, fuck, it's, the name's escaping me right now, but it might have been the first EQTs that he wore on in the dunk contest. Regardless, yeah, elevation, yeah, 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 elevation, right? He looked so cool on that. I was like, "Yo, For who sure. is that?" And <laughs> then, sure. and then he was in commercial after commercial. So once I got a grasp of what the game of basketball was off the bat. That was my guy. Like everybody yeah. was Irish fans. Everybody was 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 obviously Jordan fans. The center third, and you know, growing up, yeah, Michael Jordan was the guy. But but you know, for me, I'm a little younger than that. So like, I seen the whole thing. Like yeah. I always tell people, Kobe is my Jordan from the aspect of that's really who I grew up. For sure. I had to like he like ride or die. That was my guy. My mom would tell you right now. I had the small fro like him when I grew my hair. <laughs> like, like, I was the only thing I did. I braided it up, but it's cool. It don't matter. <laughs> like Word. I still like he was my guy, man. And, 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 and you know, for for a young guy like myself, it was cool to see that we had options. Guys were Vince Carter fans, Tracy McGrady fans. Um, uh, just, just you name it. Uh, there was especially at that two guard position, or really that 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 uh, perimeter position. That was when it was at its highest to me, as far as talent across the league. And Cole was the guy I rolled with until the end, man. So, Thanks. yeah, no, nah, it's a little little more off the court, but but still, yeah. once I figured out what what this basketball thing was truly truly about, I stuck with him. So, no, yeah, for sure. Like like. Like I said, I'm, I'm I'm right outside of Philly, so you know all my friends were Iverson fans, and then mm -hmm. you know they were T Mac fans and Ray Allen fans and Vince Carter fans, yeah. uh, you know and Jordan fans. So I literally when when I would go to the bus stop and you know we would recap what we saw the night before, we would go to the court and try to emulate what we saw. Mm -hmm. I was the only the only Kobe fan. So right. you know I and like even even when we started to get in the title run. That was a that was a big deal. Like I said, I'm I'm from I'm pretty much from Phil, the Philly area. And right. when we faced Philly, you know, that second year, you know, everybody on the bus, you know, usually when I'm on podcast or I'll tell this story, you know, you know, Lakers lost game one in the finals to Philly. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I always sat in the back of the bus. I remember walking to that back seat and they was, they was dogging <laughs> like, yo, you, your man Kobe, he ain't nothing. You know, uh, this yeah. Is all the, yeah, that, that was all it was. And, you know, and like, I was the, like I said, I was the only Laker fan in, in my, in yep. my city, in my grade. And I remember, like, now, nah, yo, we got this. And, you know, we never lost another game. We lost that one. We never lost it. the rest of the finals. It was, right. you know, so, like, that was really, like, that was my guy. And, like, I was the only Laker fan, like, through and through. So, and, like, you know, my dad was a Laker fan. And, you know, he kind of put that on me. And I remember mm -hmm. just really kind of holding that. And I remember, like, there would be days where we, we lost. It didn't even matter if it was regular season, playoffs, finals. We lost a game. I was so diehard. I'm like, yo, I couldn't even go to school next day because I knew they was going to rob me super hard because <laughs> how diehard yeah. knew I was coming. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm already knowing. That's, that's, um, at that time, man, again, you know, 
everybody was was cold, cold, or uh, was AI, AI, and I'm exactly. not saying nothing disrespectful to him. Trust me. Exactly. And actually, we got a deconstructed episode in the way about Allen Iverson too. You know, I feel like his sneaker lore gets lost in just the questions, and it was a lot more than that. But yeah, for sure. you know, um, that's another topic for another day. But yeah, man, like Cole, you know, through and through, I get it. The ups, the downs, this, that, and the third. The whole emulating Jordan thing, and 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 I get it, but there's something that you brought up that was uh, the staying on the court that was interesting. And you talked about his defense. I think that's probably the most disrespected part or most ignored part of his game is sure. the defense. The man was 12 times all defense. Yeah, that don't happen by accident at all. At you know all. what I'm saying? And the all defensive team for sure don't happen by accident. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So you are talking about a guy who was averaging 30 plus while also arguably the best, if not top three uh, perimeter defenders in the league at his high of height. So, mm-hmm. you know, again, man, that that just for me is what was the separated for him and a lot of guys. And I think when you look at it, um, I do feel like he was shortchanged a few MVPs. Um, oh, big time, big time. I, I big do, time. I do, especially looking at how MVPs were handled in, say, the mid-2010s. Oh, we yeah. started seeing teams with, 42 44 48 mm-hmm. win records win MVPs. Yep. Cole yep. was doing the same thing and yep. you know I, I feel like he was. I could go down the list but you know um that's super super nerd talk. We can get into that another time. <laughs> um, but yeah man I mean just getting to the sneakers. So uh obviously the first run was with Adidas. Uh what were some of the standouts for you for Adidas that Kobe Bryant um that, that really, really pushed him in the culture. Because I know we had, obviously, the uh, the EQT elevation. We had the Crazy 8, which was, the um, of course, probably the one that everybody associates as the first one. And then we get to yeah. the, Kobe, the Kobe 2. Um, yep. You know, I know you're one of the purveyors that still wear basketball sneakers to this day. I appreciate yep. it. They, yeah. we got, it came – all this sneaker culture thing yeah. came from basketball. So, to me, you have no sneaker culture without basketball. But For sure. it's – uh, I just want to speak a little bit about the Adidas run. What made that Adidas run special to you? Um, I think the thing that made it special was that, you know, he kind of, I guess he broke the barriers as, as somebody who was so young, you know, to have a signature shoe at such a young age. Right. Um, like, literally, like, you know, so you're talking about, like, fresh out the gate, you know, rookie. He, 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 was, he was having, you know, his own shoe, premiering mm-hmm. new shoes, and I think the thing that like also like elevated him and like catapulted him to a household name and made his sneakers, you know, popular, you know, on the scene one, Adidas was a popular brand. I mean, you know, we're talking about now like Nike, Jordan dominates, you know, but back in the nineties, like Adidas, Adidas was a, was a very popular household, yes. household name. So you talk about like the end of the nineties, early 2000s where people really kind of equated like, oh, if you wear Adidas basketball, you're going to break your ankle. You're going to hurt, you know, equated it to injuries before then, you know, into the end of the 80s, early 90s, it was like Adidas mm-hmm. was really kind of on a tear. It was kind of like the premier um, brand. But, you know, another thing that helped Kobe was like he was he was a winner. So, like, he was winning these shoes. So, you know, you're talking about like into yep. the 90s, early 2000s, you know, Lakers was, was you know, was a – a 45 plus win, you know, franchise going to the playoffs, going to the second round, third round, going to the finals, winning the finals back to back three, you know what I mean? So like, you know, that helped his brand, um, his skill set, him being a guard him being compared to Jordan, you know, all these things, um, helped him, you know, be a house, a household name, hold down Adidas. Cause you know, like, you know, Iverson had Reebok, and Adidas, you know, that Kobe was was literally the the the, the comparison. Um yeah. so you know, I think all those things helped his profile in pushing Adidas to be a popular brand. Um yeah. yep. Yeah, I agree. I think um all respect to Nike, obviously we know the swoosh is the swoosh. For sure, for um, sure. But I think once you have a figure like Michael Jordan retiring, um, the next guys that they put the line on, Barkley was retiring. Yep. Uh, Pippen was going to play a few more years, but the lore 
of the line wasn't the same. Exactly. And you could say that that was because of him standing next to Mike. I mm -hmm. still think he held his own. Mm -hmm. um, Penny was probably the worst of it um, because his injuries kept him out of some really fire models. Yeah. Like I think if Penny is not hurt in, in at the time he was, we look at that line a lot differently. Well, Absolutely. it's looked at casually a lot differently, I should say. Because yeah. I know we look at it, obviously, as arguably a top five sneaker line ever. I mean, even yeah. if it is just five models, they literally went five for, for five. sure. For sure, for sure. But yeah, and, and then you count phone posits, air go LWPs. So, like, yeah. you know, they they were pretty much flawless. He might have the most flawless top to bottom uh, sneaker line in history. Yep. Even if we talk about the resurgence um, in 2013 or 2012 with the Penny Five, it came back like and they missed. They had For no sure. misses. We had the Miami sure. Dolphin colorways and cloaks and all For that sure. other kind of stuff. So, yeah. For sure. Um, For sure. But I think to, to your credit, though, people were looking for something new. And this yep. generation that came in, nobody gravitated to Nike outside of Ticket and uh, in, in, in the big fundamental. Yep. Everybody yep. else kind of Reebok, Adidas. Uh, yep. Even though Jordan had become a brand, you've seen Ray Allen and Jordan brand. Um, everybody kind of was just venturing out and saying, you know, maybe it's okay. And truth be told, Adidas was putting out some hot shit for – uh, uh, um, casual wear and stuff like that. Like they had the platinum color sweatsuits that look like the uh, the, the <laughs> yeah. bad boy um, yeah. uh, uh, music video. So like they For were sure. doing that kind of stuff. So taking those risks, man, it was different. I don't think I think that that that's kind of lost in the sauce a little bit. Like people were really willing to expound themselves and say, okay, Ivers has Reebok and he's cool and the sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely, uh. Agree with you on that. For sure. Um, so Kobe wins three titles. The situation happens where, and, and you know, we'll have to get into all that. But then the deal is up at Adidas. Yeah. And sneaker free agency, Kobe, happens. And I think it opened up the possibilities. And it, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was right here to being Jordan Brand's first signature athlete. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, I know that it was it was O2 and they were looking at him and ultimately I want to say Carmelo got some of the models they were looking at for Kobe. Yeah. But Kobe wanted to do his thing but he was right here to becoming a signature Jordan athlete. If if I'm not if what has been told to me is correct. Yeah. It it was all but there. Yeah. So nonetheless Nike comes into the fold I think in 2003 he mm -hmm. signed with them officially and he was the catalyst for what I would say, I want to make sure I'm careful with my words here, <laughs> is a top 50 basketball sneaker ever in the Hirachi 2K4. I may be lowballing it at 50, You're low but balling it time. it's somewhere in the 50. I in my, in my personal, it's probably 20. You said 2K3? 2K4, 2K4. The 2K4. Hirachi 2K4. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. To be yeah. to be honest, mm -hmm. if you lined up ten people that are our age, yep, I'd say probably I'd confidently say five of them would say that's their that's in their top five. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm I, with you, and I I think a lot of them would probably say that's the if if they actually like played like played on the team oh, played yeah. AAU and they definitely were hoopers. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to say that's their top. Two. They're probably top two, top three basketball yep. shoe. That 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 that's arguably one of the most popular, one of the most you know, uh, complete basketball shoes like that that, that we've had. You and know. you know what's so funny? You say that if you want to stand in our age range, and I, you know I don't care, I'm with it because I feel like we're in our glory days now. So we're gonna talk our talk for sure. The two K four, I think its successor, the two K five, for sure. And the Hyperdunk are probably universally three shoes that you'll hear everybody say, yeah, no, nah, that was probably the best basketball seat guy ever played. Facts, yeah. That, that, and that. Kobe wore all those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, literally was, he literally was the face, you know, mm -hmm. of, of all those shoes. You know, they, you know they, they say that the 2K4 and the 2K5 were supposed to be, like, his his signature, his signature shoes. So those, 
those are his you know you talk about the uh lwp like like mm-hmm. like that that that's the same thing yeah um where his shoes were he just you know he had his trouble whatever those those are literally supposed to be his yep. his like his models that kobe won um yep. they just end up pivoting but he was the flagship player for those shoes but mm-hmm. those shoes were definitely iconic and and the, especially in the urban community and you know if you play basketball for your high school oh, you play yeah. au those were definitely uh flagship models that, that you know that you wore that you were around that you definitely saw that you played in that you wanted yep. you definitely fall in one of those categories if not two three or more and and it's not that they weren't durable because yeah. they played great but i'll be honest with you I probably ran through three pair of the two K fours. Okay, because we played that much for sure, and they for were sure. so good. And then there was the takedown model. I can't remember the name. It was the air, not the assault. It was the air, um, the takedown model of the two K four. And they offered it in so many different team bank colorways. I can't remember mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. It was it was in East Bay, and there was it was the takedown yeah. model of it. The air, uh, it, it'll come to me. I'm sure the listeners will probably have in the comments what it was, but there was that just yeah. the influence of that sure. Hirachi 2K4. Yeah. It literally reset and I feel like revamped Nike's signature or, or Nike's place in basketball. Because sure. before that, you have Reebok with the with the uh the bat um with the uh what was their their campaign. It was an RBK, but it was something specific to street ball. And then Nike tried to answer with the battleground thing. And it uh, worked, yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 it yeah. worked, but it but it was based off of shocks. And a lot of people weren't really going with shocks yeah. because they were yeah. hurting so many people's shins and stuff like yeah. that. So you know, Kobe, man, I'll be honest with you. As far as technology, I think he's just as important as uh Michael Jordan and Bo Jackson and um and 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 uh andre agassi as far as introducing technology to nike because he jumped off the porch and was the first one with low tops the hyper dunk thing with the playing and hyper fuses the thing like like it was so many risks and even bringing back a hirachi style sneaker um to be that guy to do that and kind of be nike's tester for what the market was going to be yep yeah, he, he. I don't care what anybody said. You can't erase that legacy, for sure. So, um, once we get past the Hirachi two K four, the Kobe one is introduced. Mm-hmm. And about what year? Because I mean, just breaking the fourth wall. We, we both uh, know we we were Foot Locker guys at one point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what year did you start? Because I'm I'm a I'm a veteran there too. What year did you start at Foot Locker? I started at Foot Locker oh eight. Okay, so I started in 09. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so when so, so when oh, I yeah. started, when I started, mm-hmm. wait, did I start 08? I started 08. Right. When I started, we we were getting transfers of the Kobe two. Like we had Kobe twos on our wall. Mm-hmm. We were getting transfers of the three. We only got like the black and white. And we might have got the MPLS, maybe. Okay. And it's funny you say that because I know that a lot of Kobe guys, in general, there's not a lot of Kobe threes and twos out there because they didn't make a lot. They didn't make a ton. Compared compared to the market of the ones and then eventually the fours, they didn't make a lot. So it's not the, I don't don't think the people necessarily didn't appreciate them. They just weren't out there like. Yeah, like yeah. I remember, my pastor had a pair of Kobe, <laughs> and I was That's like, fire. "Wow!" But he came <laughs> to youth one day, and he had a pair of Kobe threes on. He had yeah, the yeah. white, black, and silver. But I never forget. Yeah. It. Yeah. And you couldn't find Kobe threes in two at all, especially that too. Look, there was the strength, and then the fast, because I think there were two different editions of the two. There was the strong. Or- so it's actually so. The funny thing about the Kobe 2 is mm-hmm. it's actually four different versions of the Kobe 2. Okay. Okay. It's 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 the uh the strong, the sheath, the light, and then there's a trainer. Got you. Okay. 
So, okay. uh, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of people give credit to LeBron for having the V1, V2, and then the V3. As, and it, right. his shoe got lighter as he approached the playoffs. And they think right. he's the first one to do it. Kobe's actually the first person to have, you know, all those ver- different variations of one shoe as as it, as the season progressed. And he had, like yep. I said, he had four. He had the trainer. He had a light version. Then he had the Kobe 2 with the two straps. And he had the one with the one strap. Right. Um, but yeah, like you said, the Kobe two and the Kobe three, they did they didn't produce a lot. And it's gonna be actually pretty uh interesting to see when it's time to protro. And I don't I don't know like how much you've been on social media the last week, right. but allegedly this is I guess this is gonna be like a like a like a like a bomb, I guess, on your podcast. Allegedly they're going a low top route for the Kobe three, which has never been done. Allegedly. <laughs> So we see it, and we see it. This would be, be something new. Like, like whoever you, whoever tunes in, they'll get something new. Like, allegedly, they're, they're going to low that we've never seen. So we'll see. Let's go. Okay. All right. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, sure. let, let's go back to the one first, because wow, that's got me excited for a whole a low sure. three. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the one. The one. What was your introduction to the one and um in in the lexicon of sneakers, where does the Kobe one rank for debut shoes, if you will, for you? You know, that's so it's so hard, man. Like bias aside, I think it ranks extremely high. It's a very clean shoe, doesn't have a lot going on. Um and, and when you talk about shoes and how shoes matter, functionality, technology, impact, uh, you know, they were very in their moment because a lot of it has up-tempo technology. And, and that was a very up-tempo era. You're coming off like the more up-tempo with the Pippins, um, total up tempo there was a bunch of up tempo type models in the late um 2000 i mean the late 90s early 2000s so it's very much in its era um very clean simple looking shoe um color placement was very basic but did enough to you know look great um but it's the only reason why i say it's hard when you stack it against like a jordan one the penny one um you know, you know, models like that was kind of like, I could say it's number one easy, but then it's like, look at the Jordan, look at the, you know, look at Pippin's first offering, you know, you know those type of shoes like that. Um, I definitely think it holds its own. And I think, I, I think it's right up there with it, but it's hard to pick, you know, out of right. all the, the very first signature shoes. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a great shoe. And I think, the part that's so interesting is when you compare like when shoes debuted or things like that, like, and it's, and it's, it, to finish, to wrap up what I'm saying before I can jump off, jump to the next thing is like, sometimes I envision like, what would it, what would it have looked like watching Kobe navigate from Adidas to sneaker free agency to the, you know, to wearing the 2K4 and like why he had the 2K4, why they didn't name it the Kobe one and you know, all these to get in the Kobe one, how would that have looked if we had social media? We had no social media. And this is the yep. importance of it. And, and I say it to like, to these young kids today or like to my friends that have kids is like, the way these kids are brought up now and everything is like, because of society and because of the access that we have to internet. Like when I was a kid, you didn't know if your friend was home unless you saw a bunch of bikes in the yard. And like we, mm-hmm. we went out and played, we played hot and seek, we played manhunt. We played yep. basketball. We were never, never, unless like a brand new video game. Like I'm talking like the new Mortal Kombat, the new Street Fighter, the new Mario, the new Double. Unless that, I'm talking about the first week of it came out, we were never in the house. And it yep. was like, all right, we played for an hour or two. And then we went to, we was at the basketball court. We was on the football field. We was, you know, in the front, running the streets, playing knock, knock, zoom, zoom, doing something yep. mischievous, something we had no business doing. We were always outside. Until it was till the NBA to the games, are we no 730, you know, 
Iverson is playing, Kobe playing, or oh, it's Iverson versus T Mac, or you know, oh. whatever the case. You know, these kids are glued to phones, they glued to tablets, they glued to Netflix, and you know. So, like, it, it was, it's interesting to see how it would have been if we had social media to, to navigate and have, because we didn't have much information. We got information, like, after the fact, like, after we got a magazine, like, you had to beg your mom for a 300, I mean, a $3.95 source magazine to see when the next album was dropping, to see what the latest, what the new Echo was, what the new Sean John, or yep. rock, you know, <laughs> and infor information was so hard to get. We had dial-up internet before, and, like, that was, like, late 90s early early 2000s and then like the internet then you had to hope your mom wasn't on a prayer call or she, she wasn't talking to her friend because mm -hmm. you had dollar you, nobody could be on the phone so like i remember being excited and watching him debut to one and but the information was still limited you didn't know too much about the technology we didn't know we didn't know what technology was we, the, the sneaker was hot or it was bad that's all we knew we yep, didn't know yep. what it was we didn't have designers you know, discussing the shoe all crazy. Like, like this era has it very easy. You, you had to go through a lot of lengths to understand. You had to go to the Foot Locker. Like, now it's kind of like you walk in Foot Locker and, mm -hmm. like, you can read a pamphlet or, like, the, the information's on the, on, on, on the wall somewhere. To where back then, like, your Foot Locker was kind of like your guy. You depended on him. You leaned on him to, like, to get you fly. Bro, what's the hottest thing out? What's yep. going to get me the girls? What the girls looking at? What the dudes wearing? What was? What can I wear to the club? What can I get fly? Like, bro, you, your Foot Locker guy kind of got you dressed. Like, what's the hookup? Like, are right, he gonna get you the shoes? He gonna get me the banging shirt? He gonna exactly. get me, he gonna make sure I'm right. Where now it's kind of like it ain't like that. And I remember, you know, and like Foot Locker straight away from this too, where like they kind of had like prototypes where it was like, it was a John, you know, John only likes the hottest releases. If any got a release that he kind of don't want to be bothered with it. Then there was like a Tim, a Tim only wants runners. You know, they, they had them prototypes for like, exactly. The, this particular guy only wants this, like, or like it was a, it was a Jonathan. Jonathan only wants the bargain. If he can't, if it's not discounted, if he can't match it up right, he don't want. He talking, y'all. He talking. Uh, <laughs> so, so like, yeah. Times were different. So, but like to, to to answer the question fully, I remember being excited about the Kobe, but you didn't know a lot, and it was in the it was in the lore to it, and, mm -hmm. and you waited to see like, was he going to break out another color? What what did this colorway mean? You know, so, yep. I'm 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 definitely in the same agreement with you there. You know, for me, I remember hearing about it on Nike Talk. Now I was yep, a big, yep, yep. big Nike Talk guy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think the thread was like Kobe won. They dropped in what December 05, I want to say it was. Or? Yeah, yeah. It was December 05. It was right, yeah, because it was right. Um they played the Lakers. I mean, they played the Heat yep. on Christmas. Yep. But it was at L.A. because the first game was yeah. in Miami. Yeah. And I yeah. want to say that that's where I remember seeing it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is um of course, the 35-point a game season. We know what happened against yep. Dallas. Yep. And, yeah. Obviously, the Toronto game. We know that. <laughs> For but, sure. I mean, yeah. shoot, I got the 81-point color in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, see him, yeah. See him. Um, uh, but – when it happened, I remember saying, okay, because I'm a big sneaker guy this time. I, how do you follow up the 2K4 and the 2K5? Because remember, sure. the 2K5 was still on the walls. Or it had just premiered. Yeah. So it was like you're dropping your yeah. main guy who's promoting the 2K5 yep. to get his own shoe in the middle yep. of this. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. It had to been similar to what uh, Nike was dealing with with the airship. And then the Jordan one. Yeah, very reminiscent. Maybe yeah. not as much because the airship obviously wasn't as popular, but it's like yeah. you have a guy wearing a model, and then it's like, all right, let's pivot to the model. Yeah. Oh, okay. But when I saw it, I said, first of all, it was a lot more taken down mm -hmm. in this time than the 2K4 and the 2K5. So it in a weird way, it embodies, I think there are two, there are three. No, they actually, there are three that uh, uh, Kobe models, and I think embody Kobe Bryant, the player and the person, and I think that that's the Kobe one, the Kobe four, and the Kobe six. I think those okay. three 
to me embody Kobe. For sure. This one, the one to me, he looks calm at all times. Yeah. But the inners of it, it had yeah. technology in it that made him play like the best player in the game. Yeah. And I feel like the four is the innovator. The four reset the game. So I could never yeah. take away from the four. Yeah. And the six, I think when you talk about how light it was, how durable it was, and then the scaling and everything like that. Yeah. That yeah. kind of just embodied the black mamba to me. For sure. For sure. And, For sure. and, and I'm telling you right now, before we get to that list, Grinches are dope. I don't want to take away from them. Mm -hmm. But I probably have five or six Kobe sixes ahead of it. But that's okay. a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not mad uh, at that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So that's like when I say I'm a Kobe, yeah, we're this is for real. Damn. So, um, yeah, but either way, when the, when the one dropped, it was leather, which this is still the time, which kids, I know it sounds crazy, but leather sneakers were a thing back then. Listen, leather. listen, and it listen. Was heavy, but it was <laughs> yes. I don't know how to explain it. It was heavy, yeah. but it yeah. was light. Like, yep. Yep. It, it was lighter than LeBron, because I think at that point, that's the LeBron three. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because I think he's two models ahead. Yeah, so yep. that's the LeBron three. And the yep. LeBron three was the lightest LeBron of that time. Yep. Then they got super heavy with the four, which had yeah. the foam positive material. So I was like, oh, yep. okay. Yep. But um, when I saw it, I said, oh, shoot, I got to have them. Yep. Oh, I got to have them. And I got my first pair from Ross, the okay. black white colorway, um, yep. just simple black white colorway. Because at that time, we were getting sneakers, but I'm still in high school at that time. So, like, I had to have a predominantly black sneaker, predominantly white. And then I can get special via birthday money and all that other kind of stuff after yeah. that. I had to, if I wanted like the other stuff, like if I wanted like Laker color sneakers or like, uh, you know, uh, Royal foam, I had to go get that myself. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, no, it's, it's, so I got those, and then I got the LeBron two lows for back to school sneakers at the time. Okay. Okay. But um, you know, when I saw it, I said, Oh shoot, all right, I want to play in these, but dang. And I remember one day at my high school, we had at my uh before we went to the remodel, we had portables, so we had a basketball court out there. Okay. Man, I hooped in them Kobe ones. <laughs> now, oh my gosh, bro. Yeah. This is it. And yeah. at that time, I was pulling up the socks because this is when ankle socks were the joint. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like we were wearing no show socks back then. We we wasn't yeah. wearing socks yeah. above our sneakers like now. Yeah. But yeah. for to want to be cold, I pulled that sock all the way up <laughs> and then snapped it back down. Just wanting to be like Kobe. Right. It was crazy, man. Right. It was right. crazy. But that Kobe one. It's it reset the game for me. Like it was like, yeah, oh no, because some foot lockers finish line, stuff like that had 2k4 still in rotation, yeah. As far as like shit, like they were honestly, they ran that 2k4. If I'm not mistaken, I probably saw that 2k4 on East Bay till 2006, maybe, yeah, for sure. I, I want to yep. say with team bank colorways and all that stuff, yep. and then the yep. 2k5 ran somewhere about till 2007, maybe early 08, just of like yep. even yep. your basic, basic colorways. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, I mean, when the when the Kobe one came out, we know what he did. That iconic 81 points, um, the all star game in Houston, uh, the MPLS colorway, uh, just you name it, bro. Like, like mm -hmm. the the colorways and everything are just are just just out Facts. of this world. And, and, and but they were so clean and simple. And I felt like clean and simple is always a way to go for your first sneaker. Absolutely. Um, and not not to take away from it, but I think that like I think who's really embodied that is Devin Booker today. He really embodied clean, simple, but effective yeah. on your yeah. first speaker. I think Kyrie did it before him because that Kyrie won. Oh yeah, game changer. Yeah, I hate that Nike lost Kyrie. I understand what yeah. happened. Yeah, that, that Kyrie one, the Kyrie yeah. one, and the book one are probably the ones yeah. that I would compare most to the Kobe one. Yeah. Uh, just off of effectiveness of how to do a first sneaker, yeah, for sure, the right way, for sure, so, yeah. Um, and you can see you can see the DNA in a lot of these guys, sneakers. definitely, definitely. And, um, and 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 <laughs> so we're we're now in about 2008 because, of course, we talked about the two and the three. Mm -hmm. Um, the three won the MVP in, but 
I saw him. <laughs> we all saw him wearing a certain model that again reset the market before mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And it's it's energy and effectiveness lasted for about a good 12 years. And that's the hyper dog. Yep. Yep. I consider it a Kobe model. I, I sure. understand it technically wasn't. I get all that. I, I get it, but it's a Kobe. Sorry. Yep. It's a color. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The best colorways are the Supremes. For sure. Um, even the, the effectiveness of just the hell, one of the original colorways in it is a black, yellow, and purple. Yeah. Come on now. Like, like we know. We know. Yeah. It's a color. So, so another another one, another one that is like how the 2K4 and the 2K5 are supposed to be Kobe, the hyper dunk. So if you think about the lineage of like we talked about the penny line, how legendary it is, and how it went from uh, what did it go? Uh, phone posit mm-hmm. was it phone posit penny one, penny two, or was it penny one, penny two? No, phone posit, it was, it was air way up or something like that. Uh huh. Then air go LWP, mm-hmm. then penny one, penny two, then phone posit, phone posit, penny three, three. exactly. Penny yeah. two. Yeah, so how, not... so how the how the phone posit was in the middle, mm-hmm. literally the hyper dunk was supposed to be Kobe's as well. It is Kobe's phone posit. I agree, <laughs> one million percent. It's Kobe's phone. Yeah. Yes. So how 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 the how that the hyper dunk <laughs> was supposed to be Kobe's too, and if you look about it, the the, the main two people who were the the flight the flight speed was him and uh, was the Stoudemire. Him and Stoudemire were like the two people who really kind of had mm-hmm. had them going on. But um, I remember when the Hyperdunk came out, and I think that that was an extremely important model. And I think that is the moment where I was like, I, I feel like that's where like your average person, your person who follows sneakers, your person who's an expert, like, that's when everybody was like, this is what technology is. When Fly, oh, with hundred percent views, yes, when, it, it all, yep. When Flywire yep. came out, they was like, oh, this is what technology is. Like, okay, yes. this. This is what separates a good shoe from a bad shoe to a great mm-hmm. shoe. Like this, this is the separator. This is the thing. Like yeah. whatever this thing is, or whatever this thing is on this shoe, or that, this is what it is. And I think that is when. <laughs> and I think that's when, like, that's when Nike, like, as great as Nike was, they was like, okay, this is when we're really about to take it to the next, the yeah. next level. This is the next thing. Like this is where. Yeah. The separation of the brands really, really, really became in like and, and, and basketball there, culture, sneaker basketball. Yep. And from there, everything at Flywire. Literally. LeBron, Literally. Katie, Kobe, yeah. Hyperdog, yeah. everything was Flywire. Fly. Wherever they got the Flywire factory yeah. from, it yeah. cooked. It yeah. cooked from there. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. It cooked, it cooked something serious. Yeah. And I think the perfect stage. Outside of Kobe, because I mean Kobe, obviously at that time he won the MVP in him. Mm-hmm. Um, he had the whole snake pool thing, and mm-hmm. uh, not to take away from those or simplify them, but like those were iconic moments. And Kobe was sure. having iconic moment after iconic moment for sure in sneakers in a way that really resurrected how people looked at Nike basketball. Yeah. Um, for a while, because I think the shocks, as innovative as the shocks were, I think the shocks were a letdown to a lot of people yeah. because of the fact they didn't do what they looked like they did. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that yeah. whole system and then the flight thing just kind of it had more misses than hits. For sure. Um, but I feel like Kobe and 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 while we give, I got to give credit to Eric Avar as well. Oh yeah, um, big time, big time. You have to give credit when you say Kobe's yeah. name as far as Nike. You have to mention Eric A. Yeah, literally um, one in, like no in the same sentence. Yeah, like they're literally right there, right there. Yes, yes. I'm not going to go to the extent of saying you know, oh, he was the 2000s Tinker hat for like that. But if you want to talk about Tinker's influence. And what sure. would make guys push the envelope? Eric Avar took the baton and said, "I see what you're doing, and sure. we're going to do it with Kobe." Facts. But facts. Um, to to back to my point was, I think at that time there was no better stage of what that hyper dunk was. And look, the hyper dunk for good. Oh God, four years, mm-hmm. four or five years, every year hit crazy. I mean, they yeah. knocked it out the park. Um, Absolutely. But the 08 Olympics. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, and you talk about working at Foot Locker, look. Yeah. 
working near a house of hoops and you have the Germany colorway, the France colorway. Uh -huh. the, oh my gosh. That was the the United time. We Rise. That was it. That, that was, was it. 100%. That was literally it. And yeah. yeah, for, for those of us who were there at that time, because again, you're talking about two guys, ladies and gentlemen, who had to be knowledgeable of everything, the yeah. culture, as well as the technology, yeah. like yeah. having to talk parents out of buying Sounds sacrilegious, but out of buying retro Jordans to get their kids yeah. into hyper dunks because <laughs> yeah. they say they want to play for basketball. Sure. For sure. That was for a sure. thing. For sure. That was a, that sure. we were trained on and everything. And that for was sure. a thing. For sure. Um, can you speak to a, a little bit today, your experiences in that, just like from the basketball aspect of, of what that was, man? Because that, that was a real thing at one point. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was really a time. Um, and that was a time where, you know, a lot of people were, like you said, Jordan heavy. Everybody kind of knew retro Jordans, or if they didn't know it, their parents were kind of like, you know, this is this is what was hot, you know, when I was coming up, or this is what we wore, this is what we <clears throat> wish we had money to buy. Yeah. Um, so they were put kind of getting it for their kids when they scrounged up a couple of dollars, they were getting yep. or other set other signature athlete shoes. And when the hyper dunk kind of came on the scene, it was kind of like, no, this is what you want your kid in. This is the newest. Mm -hmm. This is the newest thing. This is the hottest thing. This is what all the athletes are wearing in preparation for the uh, Olympics. And this has the technology. What you want to give your kid the edge on the court. This is this is what you yeah. want to have them in. This is what you want to, you know, ha you know, put them in. This is what you want to spend your money on. This is going to give you all the bang, you know, all the bang for your buck. You talk about bang for your buck. This is this was the bang for your buck. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was really a moment. I, I remember that very very vividly and that and that was really kind of like my my first couple years in the in the company of Foot Locker. How many if you had to guess how many pairs of hyper dunks you think you went through playing? Because I know you were heavy uh, playing at that time. If you went through pairs or anything, what 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 were you playing in at that time? So I had two of the first two pairs that like that, that kind of came out and really were kind of like Every pair stuck. Every pair hit. Every like every they couldn't miss with the colorways. But the two colorways that like I had to have and like that were really like popular. I had the eggplant colorway and I had the metallic mm -hmm. gold. So they pretty much were paying homage to the flight posits. So I had yep. the eggplant and I had the and I had the um yes, the metallic sir. gold. Sir. Then I had the uh, Laker Supreme colorway, which is that black, purple, and yellow. I had that yep. colorway. Um, oh my gosh! What other? I had the home colorway like that. And then mm -hmm. a funny story is, so this is Nike talk days. Lily, like I, I, I always talk about, you know, our time and like uh, what it was like us growing up with like, this lack of technology. Talk about Nike talk. There was a guy on Nike talk who supposedly had every color pet, who had every pair. He had a, he was house of boots, <laughs> all this stuff. And like yep. PayPal was in its infant state, super infant stages, infant stages mm -hmm. at this point. High speed internet was a super new thing. Like, like this was like, like you, like your parents might have had a, either either had a couple dollars, or they really kind of were sacrificing for high speed internet. Right. And this guy um, has said, like, you know, like I got Lithuania hyperdunks. This is a, this is part of Olympic pack. Oh Lithuania. God, that Lithuania colorway. Oh my and it, gosh. And that pair was a pair where like everybody kind of wasn't on that pair, but if he was kind of in the fashion and wanted to get a fit off, whether that was the kind of mm -hmm. colorway, it was a low key fire colorway. Yeah, and I was like, I need those, and he was kind of on the tip, like I don't, I, I don't have PayPal. Something's wrong with my PayPal. Oh and, boy, and that was the only way. So he was like, Yo, I do a money order, and I risked it and sent a money order for this pair of Lithuania Hyperdunks, and I never got my pair, but that was a pair that I really, really wanted. So this, that, like, <laughs> like, like I said, like, so like I probably went through like three, four pair of Hyperdunks. I had a rotation, so none of my pairs really kind of got beat crazily, but mm -hmm. I had I definitely had a rotation, and that that was a shoe that like I was in it. Like we was going to like the local colleges ball, and we was indoor, we was outdoor. Like I definitely mm -hmm. had a couple pairs. I had the all black, the all black pair even went kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, bro, every pair went was was fire. I I wanna, uh, you know, for it to have been such a light shoe, it played well wherever it played, outdoor, sure. indoor. It matter it sure. they did sure. something with that that i feel like they need to get back in the kitchen to rediscover that they For talk sure. about this cult classic thing i would love to see a run of hyper dunks again absolutely i know they retro in 2016 but i think they'd be more well received yeah. today particularly if they kept the price point about the same but ladies sure. and gentlemen um not to talk like funk flex on this but but 
<laughs> I want to I want to I want to emphasize what you're saying here. There was a time if you were on Nike Talk, ISS, mm -hmm. Soul Collector, mm -hmm. eBay, yep. there was no PayPal, yeah. authenticity guaranteed. Yeah, yeah uh, that. no, no, no. You used to have to go to Western Union. Yep. Go to your local grocery store. Yep. Check cash in place. Uh, Am Scott. Any. Yep. Money orders had to be yep. sent for you Bro. to possibly. Yep. Get yep. this shoe. So if you spent the money, you better make sure it was disposable income. Yeah. I I have a horror story of a friend I never forget. And this is when people were proposing trades and all type of stuff. Yeah, she bro. sent twelve hundred dollars to somebody Jesus. in Puerto Rico. Wow. For the net nets and the uh, wow in gray bro. Yeezys. Yeah, bro. We took risks. We took risks. It was so Big many risks. Risk. And like the crazy thing, we we didn't know no better. And to be honest, like I'm from a small city, and when mm -hmm. we didn't have internet, bro, you kind of didn't know what's going on. And like you yep. know, this generation, like they got too much information, and like too much, you know, t you know, a lot of TV is based on the things that go on around the world, bro. We didn't have none of that, bro. We were, bro, at yeah. my household, bro, when I was really kind of coming up, like like in school age, kid, bro, whatever my parents had on, that's kind of was on. Murder She Wrote, Heated the yeah. Night. General Hospital, like that's what we watched, bro. Now, like you were watching, that's what you was watching, bro. Like you know, Matt Lock, you know, our lives and stuff like that. Bro. Like yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and we kind of, and in my mind, I was kind of oblivious. Like, oh, this is some story. This is something that somebody made up, bro. Now, bro, in my house, bro, kind of Law and Order S for you kind of dominates my. Yo, listen, I know dominates. you're a married man. My wife, that Ion Channel. It stays on in the house. Bro. Chicago PD, Law and <laughs> Order. That's all she want to watch. And, a, and, and a, lot, <laughs> a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff is based on real things. And you open up your phone, and you see all the, you know, we didn't have that. So, like, we kind of took risks. There was no, like, Zelle. Yeah. There was no cash app. You no. You just got access to, one, people got way more money. And then you got access to send money. I can send you money within minutes. It was kind of right. like. Apple, it used to be, Apple Pay, on, forget about it, bro. It used to be like, let me write you a check. And then, like, you kind of had to go to. You had to get a ride or catch a taxi to go cash your check, bro. Go to a check cash in place, and you knew on Fridays was kind of your line. Shoot, there was long. no direct deposit. They get paid from the Nothing, uh, jobs bro. for real, for real. None of that, literally. Why, None like wiring money? Like y'all don't even really bro. know what money wires are. Literally, they kind of <laughs> made those bro, we, took, we took so many risks as as young kids, bro. Early We're adults, with so many risks, bro. <laughs> but no, like, the hyper dunk. Oh, Hyperdunk was the time. Hyperdunk was the time. I remember that very vividly. Remember yeah. selling those. Remember playing in those. That, mm -hmm. that was the time. I remember having to travel to my local house of hoops to buy them. That, that was the time. That was definitely a time. And y'all's local house of hoops is not Pat. It's not Patterson, is it? Cher Cherry Hill was. Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill Mall. Right, 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 right. Cherry Hill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to that one once. And um, yeah, that was a different time then. Yeah, uh, for sure. Very different time. So for either sure. way, uh, then the game resets again. Resets again. It does. And yep. we go low. We go Bro. low. We go low. That was the most. What did you think <laughs> when you heard low? <laughs> Bro, when I heard low, I was kind of like, to be honest, like to be completely like honest, it was a it was a mind fuck. And like literally, yeah. it literally like <sighs> you know, complex and nice kicks. And all these sites don't give him his just due. And, 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 and to be honest, Kobe doesn't get his just due in a lot of things. You're talking about when you rank him all time, more times than not, people don't give him his just due. You got to wait for like a Iverson or a Jordan or Jerry West or Kareem to like speak on his behalf or like a, or like a, like a Hooper Hooper. So when, like, when you talk about his body of work, and his accolades and his awards, he don't get his just due. But when you talk about his sneakers. Oh, right there, one second. Sure. All of y'all, I just want because I know I know where you're going. All of y'all that had revisionist history when unfortunately he lost his life and now all of a sudden yeah. he's the greatest. Yeah, I see y'all. I just want you to know yeah, yeah. that I yeah. see y'all and you yeah. not low. Yeah. You y'all did not have him that yeah. high. Yeah, it's revisionist history like hell. Yeah, it's fine. I get it, but let's be honest here for a second. For sure. He was sure. extremely underrated. For sure. As a play, yeah. For sure. But, and, but, yeah. And, and like Lily is 
as much as he accomplished, he was still underrated. But like, mm -hmm. when you talk about not getting his just due from like a sneaker standpoint, from like I said, the complexes and the nice kicks, bro, you're talking about a dude who literally took every and everything that you thought as a consumer, as a parent. When I go get my sneaker, when I get my child sneaker, it gotta be high top. They need an ankle brace. If I don't get that, if if it's not high top and tied to the very top lace hole, they're gonna break their ankle. That I'm gonna, they're gonna get. Bro, as a salesman and Foot Locker with minimal to in, minimal <laughs> information, none. Having, yeah, listen, none. Having to sell, yes, a middle age parent, uh, their kid, a Kobe four. In that era, yep. bro, you literally were. It was comparable to trying to sell crack in front of a police station, bro. All, all I ever kept hearing was, "Is he playing soccer now? Is he playing soccer bro, now?" Like what, bro? That was bro. No. Literally, hands down, the hard. That's the was the hardest sell that first Kobe, year. Oh bro, my that God. first year was terrible. To be mm -hmm. honest, halfway through the first, the second year, the Kobe fought, bro. But that four. Having yeah. explained, like, you know, and that, and like, you know, some people as salesmen, this is what separates the salesman to where, like, what they know. Like, so if, you, if you're selling cards, if you're selling vacuums, if you're selling whatever, if you know just the minimal, it's not enough. So the people that go home and do the research and they know the ins and outs of what they're selling in the product and where it's made and how it's made and the function and the functionality and, you know, the perks of it and, you know, all those things. It benefited me because I was already a Kobe fan, and it benefited me because I was already a sneaker. So I was working at Foot Locker. So you know, some people, and there's so many levels even at Foot Locker. That person, I just needed, a, I just needed a job. I'm 17. My mom said I gotta get a couple dollars, and I walk in the mall. It's the first person that called me back, and then it's that person. I like sneakers a little bit, or like my homies told me to come here because they needed this kind. I don't really like sneakers, and it's that person. Like I love sneakers. I I eat, I breathe, I sleep. I right. think sneakers are it's so many levels of, of everything, whether anything that you consume is levels of it. And you know, you may think that you don't, you know, you may live in Toledo, Ohio. You think you're the best thing since pants with pockets. You think you're doing that, but it's that person in New York, it's that person in in Maryland that's doing it way crazy. You so like going home and like I had the benefit of like loving sneakers, of loving the Lakers, of loving the Kobe. So like me watching him tuning into him every night, seeing what he wore, seeing why he wore it, grabbing every magazine that I knew he was in or being featured in and grabbing every soul magazine and literally digging in through every page two, three, four times on Nike talking, going on ISS and comparing my notes, and, you know, but having to, 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 to learn his philosophy and his thought process yeah. And, and 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 I remember my pitch was always kind of like to moms and to and moms and to dads almost more more so moms, but it was kind of like you know his philosophy was a soccer player plays on a bigger field than I do. They do more running than I do. They use their feet more than I do, and mm -hmm. they're on a bigger, longer, grander field. You know, I just run to my spot and shoot the ball and go play defense. They got to run. They got to kick. They got to pass with their feet. If they can play with a a lighter low cut shoe why mm -hmm. can't i do it on a shorter field all i'm doing is doing jump shots and that one that's what mercurial released right that mm -hmm. was around the time the mercurial or the nike yep. for those yep. who don't, that's a nike's answer for uh for the adidas Addy zero something something mm -hmm. uh in the soccer world i want to say that that was around the time the mercurial released too yeah uh, yeah so yeah i, I do <laughs> so yeah so that pitch was hard and I, and I and i remember around that time this is when D Rose kind of came into the league. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember when, you know, pe people wanted to like, moms was kind of like, ah, I'm a buy him, but I still need an ankle yep. brace. I, I still got to tape his ankle. So that, 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 that time was not only hard, but it, but it was also groundbreaking and to watch him, you know, and prove people wrong, but he, he got that shoe. And then, you know, he went and got, got a championship. He went all the way and, and got a title in that shoe. So, Exactly. You know, like, bro, that that was big for marketing, bro. That yeah. was that was very big. Like we, we saw some athletes have a shoe, have a signature shoe, and turn it low. But for him to have his primary shoe, not like mm -hmm. okay, I'm wearing a high, you know, three fourths of a season, and then the other half I'm wearing a low, or like I'm wearing a high, but in the summertime I drop lows for kids that want a low top shoe. It's like no, no I'm in the low. I'm in the low all year. This is this is what I'm wearing. This is what I'm playing in all year. 
So that, yep. that was the that was that was like a real big deal. But as a as a person that worked in a sneaker company, selling it, everything you thought you knew, you threw it out the window, and you had to readjust how mm. how you became a sales. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. like I, you know, I remember like like I didn't work in a house. I was in a regular Foot Locker, and I, I remember like my managers kind of they were leaning on me like, bro, like when somebody came in, oh, we need basketball shoes. Or like when the Pretty much from back to school hit, and we knew like all right, basketball season time. And they kind of like anybody talked about any of the basketball shit, they kind of threw them on to me. And I was kind of like the expert on the floor because I ha- that's what I was living and breathing. And they, they knew I already knew I was a Kobe fan, but but that was the time, man. That was really a time, and like I missed that. I missed that era. You talk about missing airs, I missed that era, man. I like, do too. That was a that was a real, 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 real time, man. F- it's hands down my, my favorite time in sneakers. for sure. For yeah, sure. It is. It's hands down my favorite times because, you know, we had retro Jordans. So you still were able to appreciate what Mike did. Yep. But there was so much innovation and risk taking. For sure. And it worked both sure. on and off the court. It just, sure. bro, like we were wearing Kobe's and shit to the club, man. Like, sure. like just, sure. that sounds crazy in hindsight, <laughs> but that was the fresh For shit. Sure. Like, For and sure. like, Guys like Wale and them were like becoming icons and like making basketball sneakers like acceptable to win. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, like sure. that was that time, bro. And like we just there was a point in time, this may sound crazy to some, but House of Hoops was where exclusive colorways went or tier yep. zero accounts. But yep. like there were House of Hoops releases. I know yep. for me, the high school pack is probably. Mm-hmm. It's probably my favorite run of any of the like the Lower Marion Aces. The oh yeah, yeah. Any yeah. any of the school pack, whether you talk about it, even in college, the USC's, the Kentucky's, Dukes. Yeah. As yeah. much as I'm a Carolina fan, the Duke colorways they didn't miss like at all. Word. They Word. didn't miss. Word. But Word. you know, it, it just man at that time, bro. Like we really did it. Any elevated again with the five. Um, yeah. The five, you know. Look, he won the second championship. Yeah, my favorite colorway is the chaos. Um, okay, it just it's it's yeah, I see him in the background right now. Y'all love yeah, those. yeah, yeah. I it's, love it's those. my favorite, favorite five, hands mm-hmm. down. Um, I know I, I saw I saw your interview with Complex. I know how important the Bruce Lee is to you. Yeah. Um, and the Bruce Lee is very important, don't get me wrong. But that yeah. when I saw on Christmas that chaos, oh yeah, said, yo, oh wait, yeah, For what? Sure. For sure, because for sure. we didn't get them. Same. Only ha- at that point, I think really only House of Hoops got them. Mm, yeah, or if not, like it had to be a high level Foot Locker. To get yeah, them. we didn't yeah. get them for sure. But when I saw that chaos, I said, yeah. "Oh, whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa!" Yeah. And then I saw it in the sun. Yeah, and it 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 did what? Yeah, that air dust. Yeah, yeah that air dust is come, come on. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was the one. But yeah. um. Yeah, I mean, just things continue on, obviously, the five and then the six, which the six for me, I understand this is most iconic. Would you say Grinches or Bruce Lee is a more iconic? Bruce. Mainstream probably Grinches. Grinches okay. probably are. Okay. I have Bruce Lee's over Grinches personally. I Personally, I do. Yeah. From a mainstream opinion, I I think Gr- Grinch has really kind of took him really like mainstream, really like everybody kind of was on on awareness. Where Bruce Lee's was kind of like, all right, if you like martial arts, if you like Kobe, if you like basketball, check those boxes. Right. Grinch's was kind of like every everybody's looking at like every, like your neighbors probably like yeah like see me with my stripes. I'm like y'all are y'all getting these Grinch's? Like everybody yeah. was kind of on those. And that that it couldn't have happened at a better time. That matchup against the Heat. Yeah. Um, the yeah. whole world watching LeBron yeah. versus Kobe and then yeah. Lakers versus Heat, and it's yeah. Christmas, and then yeah. you just see Grinch, and it's yeah. crazy because they weren't marketed as Grinches initially. Yeah, they weren't. That pack was called yeah. the Stoplight Pack. Yeah, and yeah. LeBron had the stop, KD had the slow, and Kobe had to go. Which yeah. I mean, I guess if you look at their games, kind of makes sense, but yeah. That yeah. pack wasn't marketed as Grinch, 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 Grinch. Don't get me wrong; they, they are still the Grinches, but yeah, you know, just just looking at at what it was like, 
I remember the initial previews of that pack when we obviously saw because that was the first V2, if I'm not mistaken. The LeBron yeah, V2. Yeah, I yeah, want to yeah, say that's yeah. the first V2. Yep. Yeah. Because there weren't a lot of V1s. It wasn't but the black, red, and then the South Beach. I don't think I remember any other. Wasn't a ton. Well, wasn't a ton. Or the black, the all black, the solid all black, black. Uh, uh, anthracites. And um, then, yeah, uh, the V2 started with the Christmas, and he hit a stride on that V2. That was crazy. Yeah. That V2, yeah. LeBron yeah. ate still one of the best mm. basketball sneakers ever. But that Kobe 6, man. Um. I, the craziest Kobe six story I have is it's a, it's August. Uh, it was August, 2011. And we had just got like a bonus or a gold coin or something like that. And for those y'all didn't know what a gold coin is, <laughs> if you had a good audit, a good mm -hmm. uh, inventory check at the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. taking you back with that one. Um, sure. You got what's known as a gold coin, which was $50 towards a sneaker yep. plus your discount. Okay. Ooh, man. So <laughs> what a time. I remember you had to check Foot Locker unlocked to see where yep. releases were going. Yep. So I went and I wanted the KD scoring titles, the threes. Mm -hmm. They were white, like icy blue. Um, had the orange like uh digital digi camo pad and whatever. Yep. So I went to a local house of hoops about an hour away from me. And they didn't get them. Mm. And I said, okay. But I looked on the wall and I saw those or those. The uh the breast cancers. And I said, Yep. yep. What the hell are those? Now yeah. I'd seen breast cancer fives in person, yeah. and I didn't get them because for whatever reason I forgot how I didn't get them. But I said, okay. And they rang me up, and I got breast cancer awareness Kobe's for 91 bucks, Ooh. which sounds insane. <laughs> Which sounds crazy today, wow. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I yeah, love y'all yeah. love those. Yeah. Um, I remember we we thought we were gonna get a pro troll before the contract ran out, and they, they did a run. But if you're listening, we'll take them. We'll Definitely. take them. Definitely. We will take them. Definitely. We'll take them. We will take them. Um, Definitely. yeah, I mean that's six, it's my favorite Kobe. Bro, uh, got, the six got so many iconic colorways, um, bro. Gosh, bro. And like I said, I, dude, I have the glass blues over it, mm. over the, the Grinch. Just ahead of the Grinch, I got the glass blues, <laughs> the rice, the breast mm -hmm. cancer awareness, mm -hmm. the light bulbs, mm -hmm. China's. I love China's. I love that China. Um, yeah. Orange counties. Mm-hmm. East LA's are okay. I don't know if I have them over those. Chaos V Chaos 2s. Yep. I'll make sure I do this right. Barcelona's. Mm -hmm. There's another one. 3D. 3D. Uh um, okay. the gray 3Ds. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the 3D Lakers, but I'm not putting those ahead of those. Okay. And then Grinch, maybe 10. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable with Grinch at ten, but I have those other nine colorways ahead of the Grinch. I love the Grinch. I'm not taking nothing away from. Him. I think it's the Casuals' introduction to Kobe. I get for it, sure. but for yeah. me yeah. personally, I I hate what it's become in a lot of ways because it's become the cheap cop out to yeah. me. To yeah. and look, I'm all inclusive of Kobe's, but. At the, of, of sneakers, but there's something about Kobe's. I'm a little bit of a uh, a, a snob when it comes to Kobe's. I, I, I am, I, I, I am, I, I am, bro. I'm that. sorry, but I am. I, I am that. a bit of a snob uh, because you know I remember being the one that everybody was going LeBron's, uh, KD's, and I was buying the Kobe. Yep. Anybody that knows will tell you, no, nah, Earl's buying the Kobe before anything. Word. Um, and that's just what it was. So, Word. yeah, I think I have all those colorways ahead of the Grinch, but I appreciate the Grinch. I think they're the most iconic Kobe. Word. But, man, I got to tell you, bro, like that that six was special, man. For sure. For sure. Yeah. The only thing I have real complaints about is I felt like they could have done better with the Zoom Air in it um, mm -hmm. because it bottomed out if you played it after a while. I did bottom yeah. out. And I had that mm -hmm. issue with the eights 
because of the lunar lawn. Um, yeah. But, you know, um, going to the sevens, I wanted to talk to you about this. What was your galaxy story? <laughs> my galaxy story. Yeah. Um, my, to be, to be, I saw so my galaxy story is I can't, I had to camp out, bro. I was out, I was out there seven days camping out for the galaxy phone posits. I'm sorry. What? Seven days, bro. <laughs> seven days. Sharing how? Them all. How did that? How did how? Bro, literally took off work. Yeah. PTO. I'm in my car, and it's like two other people in my car, and we kind of doing check-ins, hour on hour check-ins. Uh, in front of Cherry Hill Mall. Yeah. For Twelve o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock for seven days, bro. You literally walk in the mall aimlessly, waiting for an update. You kind of got you on a Dunkin' Donuts, Chick Fil A, McDonald's diet, eating crap. You kind of got to use the bathroom before they close. Maybe drive the Dunkin' Donuts and buy a coffee and use their bathroom, and you kind of sleeping in your car. I think we, I think we bought a hotel. Or a motel one night, and other than that, bro, we was in the kind of in the car with it for seven days. I got the phone posit, and then I got the Kobe, and I got. I think I didn't get the Bron. I got everything else, but the Bron. Yeah, I um, <laughs> my story is a little funny. So, um, I was working in Central Florida at the time at a Foot Locker. Okay. And um I'm working there and our our district was next to the district where All Star Weekend was. Mm. So all those videos that you see of Florida Mall was right there <laughs> in that parking lot, whoop de whoop. And I remember it got so bad, bro. There were um Police on horses, the SWAT team was out there. Oh, it wow. Was, it was bad. Now, wow. to I don't know who made the decision, but there was only around 200 pair in Orlando, mm -hmm. which was a really bad decision because mm, for sure. that's for where sure. the all star game was. Uh, yeah. Nonetheless, it got so bad. I remember, and not the name drop, but if you know who Big George is, George Jenkins, shout out to George. Mm -hmm. and George said, pack this shit up and get them up out of here. And they did not release the phones down in Orlando. Really? Yep. I know exactly who that is. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I'm, like that's, that's, that's Big George. <laughs> I, actually met, I actually met him in person like, like two months ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So at that time, he was the regional vice president for, uh, stores in the southeast okay because he's from atlanta area yep and yeah he was down there um all the heads and this that and the third were down there and i remember seeing clark kent <laughs> and clark was looking like yikes but i know that yikes was like well i got my shit i don't know about y'all <laughs> 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 so yeah but they released the the lebron and the kd and the coach so i got the kobe i got the kd and the lebron Okay. And then I got the flight one, yeah, um, which probably is the most underappreciated shoe. Under super, had. yeah, word. Yeah, that shoe was fine. Mm, oh word. my gosh, yeah, word. But, yeah, that seven man was kind of the end. Uh, well, it wasn't the end. It was nearing the end of Kobe accomplishing the top of the top standing. That that shoe yeah. probably signifies to me when I feel like he was last the unequivocally best basketball player in the in the NBA. I'm not mad at that. Um, that's that's fair. That's fair. I think once LeBron won the title and figured <laughs> out how to win, yeah, and Kobe that next year because now you're talking about when he tore his Achilles the following year, yeah, it it was <laughs> over. But Kobe was still all defense, still averaging thirty. Um, but to me, that's when the switch happened. And when I think of the seven, I always think of the gold medal sevens too. Because as iconic as the Galaxy was, the gold medal probably is the last uh, high point of Kobe's career mm -hmm. uh, as far as accomplishments. Sure, he made all-star games past that and came back from the Achilles. And, you know, the body just started to betray him at that point. Yeah. But a lot of work, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. Um, 
we got 17 great years for sure of him like on top so i can't complain about the last for three. sure for sure but just what what um as far as the seven man what does that that one mean to you in the pantheon of kobe's to be honest um the four was kind of like unknown it was kind of like in the beginning it was kind of like all right like like all right Cole, what you doing like you kind of messing me up like as a consumer i'm loving it it's something new like every shoe i've been enjoying i've been buying it but it was like as a salesman like all right you got to help me out here yeah. the five was the five is my like my fa pretty much my favorite um really was okay kinda, so i was like yo i love like i'm loving this and then you know five had bro i i think i own not counting doubles i well counting doubles i probably own 55, 60 pairs of Kobe fives alone, something crazy like that. So let me let me pause you there. My fault, because I didn't realize how much the five meant to you. Let's stay on the five before we get to the to the seven. Oh, we good. What does the five mean? No, no, what does the five mean to you? <laughs> like I, I I did not know the five was your uh yeah, favorite. The five, cool. is, the five is the five is yeah. My so get give me your the floor is yours. Give me the rundown. Like talk to me about the five. Uh the five is just the five is my favorite. Um mm -hmm really just you know the look of it it's really just like a like a a beefed up more thoughtful innovative four like it's kind of like just the evolution of the four mm -hmm. um i feel like they mastered like the look the colorways were great like i said i love bruce lee's i love dark knights um oh i love cake i love chaoses i loved um dukes i love breast cancers you know every colorway kind of just stuck um the PEs like Kid Hollywoods. I love the um the Vinci's, the Vin you know all you know all those Inspector ga Inspector Gadgets. That's the uh, one. That is the one. You know all yeah. those shoes um were really thoughtful. Thoughtful. The color placement. You know the four was great. Um introduction and what they can do with a low top with color placement. Then you got to think about Nike ID. Nike, bro, I probably own nine Nike IDs. That was a big deal back then. So like it was like art right, the four and other different models is kind of like you know in high school when if you had a computer a computer lab you kind of played with Nike ID. I'm gonna get these. I'm gonna get these and you never got them. When a five came out, people was ordering them. People was ordering them bad boys. I know multiple that got at least two Kobe IDs. You know oh I mean? yeah, so, yeah, for sure. For um, sure. so that was a time. Um, and then like I said, really like the storytelling really kind of got crazy you know him wearing dark nights and him wearing you know him wearing them and debuting the shoe in new york um take, have, releasing that colorway in 30 was it 34th street in new york him mm -hmm. having bruce lee's and like you know the chaos and then this is when really we really saw sneakers meets um pop culture so you're talking about like the chaos and the batman films dark nights chaos the joker oh my gosh this is when oh, really oh, when this is, this is when you really saw basketball the power this is the nba this is powerhouse this mm -hmm. is when it meets pop culture and what these kids are really like consuming they're consuming basketball but they loving what's going on in the movies and what you know this that, that was like the real what you consider i guess a crossover uh -huh. um so like i said that's my favorite i probably own 60 pairs of 55 60 pairs of kobe fives and you know <laughs> Bruce Lee's, I had five pair at one time. Lower, you know, so my my alma mater, their colorways. Me, I, me and Kobe actually share the same alma mater's colors, burgundy, burgundy and silver. Same, right. We have the same one. So like Lower Marion, every Lower Marion came out, I had to get two or three pair. So the, the Lower Marion fives, shoot, I think I had like four or five pairs of those. Bruce Lee's, I had like three pairs of those. Um, I remember Bruce Lee's, like the total amount of pairs I had, total like this is again nike talk days so i was helping people from california mm -hmm. from portland get shoes i think i had 19 pairs total i kept five and i helped other people retail plus shipping for the rest of the other pairs of um, bruce lee's of bruce lee's um I me mean, that's my that's my favorite shoe that's my favorite kobe is the five hands down and, and like i said it, it got easier to sell um at foot locker the six was the at that point he was it was a household name so literally like i had to do minimal it's kind of like all right like, you know what it is like right. this, this, this is the, this is the shoe that the person that just won back won back to back titles this is what he's wearing so either you want it or you don't it, you don't get no more trusted 
than a basketball player wearing, winning two NBA championships and two finals MVPs back to back. In this era, so I was like, it, like I, I, I did my salesmanship was very minimal. I didn't do, I didn't do much talking. Yeah. Um. So that and that whole ankle brace, needing the ankle brace, that was out the window. It's kind of like you know his brand was kind of trusted, right? Um, and like I said, this is this is them doing that crossover between basketball and pop culture. You still had those colors, so like they carried over the kids. At this point, it was another chaos. At this point, so you really kind of talk about three chaoses: the four, the five, and the six. Then you had that four. Um, oh my god, love that four. That's one of my. That's one of my favorite Kobe's. And you talking about you know light bulbs, light light bulb six. Is you talking about Concord mm-hmm. six? You talking about Dell? So and then you also got to talk about um, the commercial. You kind of ramp up with the commercials. And he had commercials like ankle insurance commercial. Mm-hmm. Then when you kind of get into the seven, you talking about the Kobe system. This and this is like like I said, this is more. This this is when Nike basketball was at the peak of its powers. And this is where, like, when people get upset with Nike and what they're doing, and, oh, we, we wish it was, like, back in the day, this is when they were really, like, channeling. This is top-tier Nike when they were really untouchable because you did literally you get back into pop culture and the Kobe system when you got Kanye, you got Jerry uh, Jerry Rice in the commercial, you got Larry Fitzgerald, Serena Williams, yeah. you know, all these, you got all these people at the top of their game the peak of their powers the most popular in their fields on the kobe commercial i mean on the kobe commercial you know what i'm saying um so underappreciated like look at the names you're talking about that like were there yeah bro like come on man yeah so look at the names (laughs) so um that i said that was a fun era for me man and i think in terms to answer your initial question before we went down to that rabbit hole you know, the Kobe 7 was kind of like, if you were a Kobe fan, if you were a sneaker collector, if you were in the basketball shoes, if you were a hooper, if you were any of those four categories or more, you really were playing with house money as a consumer. It was kind of like, what more can he do? Like, what more can Nike do? Like, like you done gave us three bangers. What is the fourth? Like, like, what more, how much better can you get? How much more innovative? You done gave us low. Then I then we watched you get lighter and lighter and lighter mm-hmm. and not sacrificing any technology, any performance. The shoes literally getting better. It's getting lighter and I'm getting more support. I'm getting more stability. I can do more. And you're giving us more iconic colorways. And you're giving us more iconic moments. You don't got two titles. You don't went to all-star games. You don't, you done, you know, you done did all these, all these all these things. So like the seven was kind of like, all right, what more can you do? And then, then he brought it. And then it was like, Oh, like you got to play strong and you got to play fast. And I, I can, you can drop the, you can drop the insole. And, and then like, I'm going to keep this. And this is the piece where like the sneak sneakers got to keep having is that connection to like all right, like basketball is going to be there? People are going to love basketball. They're going to buy basketball sneakers. But like, what? How can you connect with these consumers outside of basketball? And this is the mainstream piece. And this is where uh, I'm sorry, Nike, but this is where Anthony Edwards and Adidas is getting it, where they're kind of yep. like speaking to like the young kids and like all right, like like I'm talking trash, but I'm backing it up. And look at like look at my campaign. I'm talking about my car. You know who my you know you know about my dog and you know you know what I mean you know about all these things. And even Lamelo had it for his first shoe. But like this is when you when in, in like you even think about the '90s where like they paired Jada Kiss and Iverson when yeah. Penny when Penny had Chris Rock when Jordan had Spike Lee. Like you think right. everybody had a pairing. And then you think about the Kobe Seven and you had Kanye. Yeah, you talking about? <laughs> You're talking about Kanye, bro. He's the hottest rapper in the game. Yep. You're talking about he dropping graduation and late registration. Then you're talking about uh, watch, watch the throne. Watch, that was, watch that's the throne. Yeah, that was watch the throne. Time. Literally, yeah. watch the throne because that's yeah. when the Kobe, the last of Lebr- the Kobe seven, but that was the LeBron nine. You're literally talking about watch the throne. You yeah. literally get no hotter. You get no hotter than that. And then you're talking about you're pairing that when this is when Kanye got his own shoe and then he has the cheetah Yeezy two, bro. Come on. like bro, it, the stars couldn't have lined up better for Nike yeah, at bro. that time. You it was perfect. Words out my mouth, it, bro. yeah, bro. <laughs> the stars don't align any better than that. 
Um, so like I said, the Kobe seven was good. You got new technology, more berries. And, and, and that was Kobe's thing was, yeah, I'm a signature athlete, but you're not just going to sit me. Like, you're not going to call me from LA to Portland and just say, all right, bro, here's your shoe. We're going to roll this shoe out. And, you know, you like to roll your shoe out on Christmas, Christmas day game. You're going to give you this shoe. He's going to be, you're going to give you Laker colorways. It was no, like, we're going to push the envelope. You're going to give me better technology. I want it lighter. I want it lower. I want to be faster. I want to be stronger. And each yep. shoe brought something different. And, and, and the way that they just tied in different things, um, different materials, different patterns, different colorways, different palettes, and, and made it mainstream, brought in pop culture, brought in rappers, brought in different athletes, That's different crazy. Nike athletes. Bro, like, they, they they literally did everything, bro. So the Kobe yeah. 7 was really, really monumental and really, like, a pioneer in, like, what you can do with a sneaker, how you can tie in multiple things, how you can satisfy different hoopers, different consumers, um and bring them all to this one particular shoe. So that, 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 that was a big, that was a big deal, man. That was a really big deal. I agree. I, I couldn't agree with more on anything you said. I think, um, you know, yeah, you, you said it all, bro. Like, like that seven and then colorways, it's probably, it's hard picking between the four five, six or seven, whose colorway palettes were better. Bro, you had but a pack called seven, the he had a predator pack, bro. He had a yeah, guard. bro. Like had a <laughs> literal predator pack. Like, 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 like you're talking about storytelling, bro. Like, yeah, when get, man. When you get back and start tying the stories, when he says, "Oh, like you know, in the 01 finals, I had to study Iverson." Study, yeah, yeah you, study. You talk, about the or, you talk about the orca well colorways for the Kobe two, and he brings that back into like you know the deadliest animals, the most poisonous, bro. When I tell you Kobe and, and, and the way he was just so malicious and in and, and particular and really just like avid about what he was wearing and like how involved because like bro like there's some signature athletes just kind of just they have minimal minimal say whether yeah. it's whether it's in their contract or they just don't they, they, they think about like hey, i just want to focus on the game or like all right like i got a nike bag i got an nba bag sprite giving me a bag nba giving me a bag louis vuitton like some some players don't care some players don't have the say but when i tell you he stretched his say and his authority to the limits bro he pushed them to the limit every single what can i do why oh i can't do that why can't i do it oh you think you saying you can't do what you're not telling me why i can't do it go find out why i can't do it why we can't do it let's find a way to make it happen and then let's you know let's execute it so that 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 that, that was just like and that was a thing of itself like and, and being a fan of him and, and, and just figuring out why his shoes operate like that why why, why they work like that or what's the reason behind and like like i said the storytelling bro like like yeah Everything meant something. Everything Every last, something. there was not a waste of it. The only thing you could say that, I don't even really want to say they mailed it in because there was a purpose for them. Outside of the team bank colorways that you would find on like a Ross or something like that, where it's like, yeah. it's just a basic like orange and white or green and white or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Everything had a purpose. Everything. Everything had a purpose. From, from, mm. And they were all GRs. That's yeah. what the best part about this was for the, major, for the mm. most part. They yeah. were all stuff that you could yeah. go into a Foot Locker. And, and yeah. lest we forget, there was a point in time where only Foot Locker carried Kobe. Yeah. Yep. The finish yep. lines were not yep. allowed to carry Kobe. Yep. Only Foot yep. Locker and mm -hmm. Nike were the only retailers mm -hmm. that carried Kobe. And yep. it, was, it was purposeful because it was based in basketball. Yep. And I think, again, when you talk about like the Predator pack and like, 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 um, we didn't even think of them as packs at that time, but yeah. it's like clearly yeah. there was a theme. Here. Um, the invisibility yeah. cloak, which you could look as a foreshadowing to the Wiznard series that he was writing. Yep. You know, yep. and, and and again, him being such a fan of what Heath Ledger did in the Dark Knight, like yep. any like the storytelling on it, it, it just mm -hmm. I just don't see that care from a lot of people outside of. Kyrie told stories very well. For sure. Um, with Nike. I think mm -hmm. um, Kevin Durant at his high of heights told story very well. And mm -hmm. then other than that, today, Anthony mm -hmm. Edwards, to your credit, is probably the only one that really is telling stories like that. Yeah. And so, then, yeah. yeah. Then you got to think, you know, Kobe with the five, he gave us a double pack. We had that uh, Aston Martin. Aston Martin pack. pack. Right. Yep. 
Right, right. Which, which, look, at that point was just the peak of the height of the hyper dunk as well as the COVID. Mm. So it's just like, man, what, what, well, we were so spoiled, not spoiled, what we were blessed with at that time. Yeah. Man, they just, yeah. I understand how basketball has kind of lost its lore because people stop caring as much. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, sure. they stop caring as much. And I think, yeah. you know, even if you look at these upcoming releases with like the X Ray Pat, they're the X Ray Kobe Fives. Yeah, I've heard mixed reviews on them. I personally like it because I know what it's telling the story of, and yeah. I hope they bring that T-shirt back. I really do. I hope so. I, I hope they bring that T-shirt back. But like, Kobe was telling stories, man, for and sure. shoot, it worked because he won an Oscar at some point too for telling for stories. So you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, kind of wrapping up. Obviously, we know we got to the eight. And I. I Look, I love the eights. I think eights are incredible. I don't think that they're what everybody makes. So there's a lot of people who think eights are the greatest Kobe's ever. For sure, they do. A lot they of do. people. And they're great. Don't get me wrong. They are. I just don't have them above four, five, six, and seven. Yeah. Personally, they're they're yeah. not. I could see an argument for four, but yeah. five, six, and seven. Yeah. They're not touching them. Yeah. Um. Them. I love the eights, man. I, to be honest, like when it gets, when it comes to Kobe's, like it's not. It's, I don't have a pair where I can say I don't love. I kind of love them individually for what they are. Um, yeah. I think they came out the gate smoking. Like that first Del So colorway was extreme. And, and, and to be honest, Woo. to be honest, that year, that year, that, that like, if from a from a minus the shoe part, if you talk about just performance. Statistically, that was one of Kobe's best years. Oh yeah, yeah. hands down. And and, and and I guess you credit Dan Antonio and his system, bro. Kobe was scoring like out of his mind, bro. He was yeah. he was playing a lot of minutes, but he he was bro. He was playing like literally out of his mind, like ridiculous, like like literally how they talk about like LeBron like defeating Father Tom. That was literally Kobe yeah. up until up until his Achilles injury. Like and like we didn't have a we didn't have a great squad. You know, we rushed uh, Dwight back from injury. You know, mm -hmm. he, he had his back injury. And um, Steve you know, Nash was old at that point. We Steve didn't Nash have old. Bro, but like, he, you got to think about like, we had Del Sol's, then we had Purple Fades. And, mm -hmm. you didn't, and like, then the moments, like the game winners, when he dunked on Gerald Wallace and um, uh, I forget who else. And, and I at, think it was. And, uh, um, Oh gosh, was he it Mozgov? No, he it number thirty. Uh, Reggie Evans, when he dunked on them in the Nets, you know yeah. the, the 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 comeback against Toronto, all the game, bro. He had a hell of a season up. Oh, until, ridiculous, bro! He had a freaking ridiculous season. But like purple fades are iconic, and then you think about the PEs. You also think that's all, that's also the season where the NBA introduced the amnesty, where you can when you start to see you can just amnesty a player. So you got to think about the amnesty that game against yeah, Dallas. Against Dallas. <laughs> so, I mean, it's so like, bro, like, when we talk about Kobe, I can really, like, I'm really, like, an encyc encyclopedia. I can really, yes. like, I, like, it's like, it's like files in my head. I'm just literally flipping through games bro. and colorways and everything. Yep. But there's so many colorways, like, that released, that were PEs, that were samples. Bro, that that season was nuts, but it was cut short because of his injury. Because of the injury, yeah. And um, I think once you get to Kobe's, and once you get past the four, it's really you really a preference. It's really a preference. It's a preference thing. Like yeah. I said, yours is sixes, mine's is fives. Bro, right. one of my best friends, shout out to Slim. His favorite Kobe ever is the Kobe three. I'm not mad at that. So it's like, it's it's a preference thing. To be honest, I try not. To, I, don't, I try not to rank them. My favorite is the five. I kind of don't try to rank after that because they're really kind of like it's like a kid, like these are my kids thing. Like like I love them all the same. Some stick out more than others, but I love them all. But I love the Co or Orca two is one of my favorite Kobe's of all time. Oh, bro, so they're like, beautiful. They are so beautiful in hand, bro. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Um, yeah. and this is this is from a bro. I, I I've owned like I said I own sixty Kobe fives alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I probably own 45 Kobe sixes. Anything over the four, anything every Kobe after the four, I own over 30 pairs of. I don't, I, I'm, I don't blame you one bit. 
Yeah. But um, you know, his line was, you know, he had a great line. And it's something that like if if you were him, what more could you have asked for in a line? Mm-hmm. Especially once you hit the code before you literally were playing with house money. He literally had the most and like in it's paying dividends, but he has the he has the most worn shoe to like right, right now, the most worn shoe in the NBA. Yep. You know, people are beating down the doors for before the pro trolls kind of you know got came. Everybody wanted a shoe. You can name your if if you had a Kobe, you can literally name your price, especially if you were in COVID. Um, So it's like you know, iconic line, bro. You know, when you start to rent, put his shoes against others, bro. You kind of don't get you don't really kind of get much better than him. Um, You know, the only people you really argue and is Jordan. You know. Barkley, Pip, Penny, Penny, you know, Pippin, Pippin, Penny, you know, like other than that, bro, it's kind of like I'm not even entertaining too much more, to, you know, after that, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Brian, Brian got some strong offerings, but, you know, you come when you when you compare like looks, technology, performance, yeah. moments, you know, iconic, you know, things surrounding the shoe, you know, all those things like, bro, like it, it's not many that's that's Cole fooling one with him, bro. One. He won a for one for sure, for he sure. Yeah, I I know for me, um, I think Kobe's four, five, six, four through eight run is is the only thing that I think the only thing LeBron could probably do not to put them against each other is probably seven through ten. Um, that seven See, through ten run, his seven through ten run was crazy. The mm. only the the blimp. So for me, like, if you're doing like two, like, I think LeBron seven eight can go toe to toe with a like a lot of shoes. True. The nine, I and I. So this is this is my critique against Le, like LeBron shoes. Like even like like the four. I think the four was didn't was like a like a nice looking shoe. Colorway saved it, right? Okay. I think the nines was. Not great to me, but colorways were probably like some of the better colorways you'll see on a shoe. The 10 was a good looking shoe and it performed good and it had good colorways, but like I wasn't crazy about it. But like the the seven and eight were like great looking shoes, like 10 out of 10 designs and great colorways. You know, so like that's how I break down shoe. Like, <clears throat> how was the look? How was the colorway? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? How did how did how did consumers like think about it? Um that's like, a great measuring stick. But like even from like from a foot locker standpoint, to me, like the LeBron 12 was ugly. But it we was. couldn't but we couldn't keep them in store. Bro, we, I couldn't keep them. It didn't, because every colorway was a hit. I'm with you. Bro, yeah. Every color every was a hit, but the shoe, bro, the shoe was the ugliest shoe. To me, the LeBron 12 <laughs> was terrible. But we could yeah. not keep them in. We, bro, we that keep that them in NSRL, store. that Miami Dolphin type colorway. Bro, them we could not keep them in store, bro. Like even when you get to KDs, like, like when you rank the th- like mines, I like I say the three to four and the five were his like was like his sweet spot to me. Mm-hmm. The sixes were good, but I wasn't crazy about them. But we could, sixes was if you ask my sixes are the most sixes yeah. are the most six or seven are the most most popular ones to some kids. Yeah, um, no, they are. Um, I was a big fan of honestly three through seven. I think that he didn't really miss. Three through seven. Eight was like, ooh. Yeah, like, and like to be honest, like six and six wasn't bad because you think about six, you had Aunt Pearl, you had peanut butter and jelly, yeah, and you had that N- 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 six color. This is that N- this is the N7 started getting popular. So you had the N7 mm-hmm. color, like like he had great shoes. It was it, it was a slim shoe, it wasn't a lot of material on it, was a very small shoe, you know. And then after you know, once the Kobe four and the five got kind of crazy. A lot of different designers were kind of like, oh, let's use that DNA on on this signature shoe, and yeah. and and you know that's like tenfold. And literally every Nike signature athlete has some sort of DNA of Kobe spilling over to that shoe. But um, that's how I measure. Like I said that's how I measure the shoe. What it looked like, if it was comfortable, how it sold, the colorways, you know, things like that. But um, yep. yeah, bro, I, I'm I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you. Uh, as far as like the make of a build, I, I do give a little more grace on the LeBron line, but I get it. Um, because I mean, nine's good lord. I 
do. You talking about couldn't keep them in stores, bro? Yeah, everything yeah. in the LeBron everything. not sold out, bro. For it, sure. it, it, For sure. it, the lows, the highs, yeah. the the the. Yeah, elite, the yeah, elite, like the yeah, ES, yeah, like, it, it, I, we yeah. couldn't keep nothing, and yeah. I was a big fan of the night. But however, I will say they feel like dog shit on your feet. If mm-hmm. you don't go a full size up, you're cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. once we got past the eights, we get to the nines. That's a really interesting time in Kobe's career. The Achilles is gone, but I want to be very careful in saying this as well. The Masterpiece 9, mm-hmm. the 9 Elite in general, but the Masterpiece 9 is probably my favorite constructed Kobe ever. It okay. looks like the care that went into producing that shoe, it mm-hmm. almost, not just because it's knitted, but it felt like they took every D, every aspect of the DNA of the line that they had from past, present, and future mm-hmm. and put it in one. The carbon fiber on the on, on the midsole, the lunar line, the, the fly, the fly wire in the lacing, the fly knit um build. The it, it just look that nine. But specifically the masterpiece, and I'm so glad that they're retroing next year. Well, allegedly, pro troing next year. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. But I know. Well, I know. Well, they probably will because we're, we're starting to get nines now with the halos and then the Christmas. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> dog, you talking about beautiful? Yeah, I mean, uh, the the silver lining and Kobe be having to sit down for a second with 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 the Achilles was the way that that shoe was constructed. And I saw your interview. Um, on complex sneakers podcast where they had the HTMs, I do feel like that was it was a wild choice for lack of a better term. I don't yeah. think that HTM is in the top twenty four Kobe's ever. It's great, yeah. but I do think that that was strictly based off of, and this is my thoughts, not Daryl's, y'all. That was strictly based off of the price of HTMs. Yeah, I just. When you when you said that you don't think many Kobe heads would have it, I was I was looking at TV like, yes, he's right, he's right. No, we're not picking that HTM. Yeah. Dog, no, it's great. It, the multicolor is yeah. beautiful, but not in the top twenty four all time now. Yeah, I mean, and, and to speak to, you know, the care and and the intricacies and the, you know, the process between you know crafting and, and molding that shoe. I think they hit the nail on the head, like you know, with the name masterpiece. The the the, the initials, it was that was Lily a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the Kobe nine was 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 a great shoe, and, and here he goes. You know, this is this is kind of like a here he goes. Like 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 I said, once he got past the Kobe, like in the middle of the Kobe five. If you were a consumer, I'm if you were if you were <laughs> if you were him. If you were his agent, if you were his, if you were Eric of all, whoever you were, you were literally like, I'm playing with house money now. I'm it like, was like watching Shikari Richardson finish that race literally. Like weeks ago. Like, yeah, I'm gone. I got to go. Literally. I'll see y'all later. I got to go. <laughs> and like, you're literally watching him uh, like, like, you know, like, like Mark Jackson, like would say you're watching the master at work. You're literally watching them like. Every time, bro. Like, like at this point, like the brand. At this, at this is literally like blue magic. Like the brand is trusted at this yeah. point. Like it's stamped. Like everything that comes out, bro, is a hit. And mm-hmm. we watched. We we literally just watched them go down with Achilles and just kind of like, oh, like, like, damn, like is are the is low tops. What's he gonna do? Comes back with a high top. You know what I'm saying? But it, you know, he, he it's still if you're wearing it, it still feels like you're wearing a low top shoe. It, it just, does, it yes, bro. Yes. For those that never wore it or were like, oh, it's too high. One that's bullshit because that was that time where people were wearing Yeezys and Yeezy mm-hmm. and Jay sneakers. Mm-hmm. So you can't say one was the style and then not the other. It's just yeah. not yeah, it's okay. We get the hate, but yep. please stop it. Yeah. Um, but for those of us that knew it was like, okay, we're here and, and, and it still feels like while I'm locked down in the upper, it still plays like a low Yep. because of 
if you look at the way it is constructed, I, I wish I had a pair near me. I don't right now, but I have a few nines still left over. Um, they haven't started separating yet. But if you look at the separation of what a lot of people remember when people were chopping down nines, mm -hmm. yep. If you look at where it's separated, the reason that was so easy to do is because there's this stretch of elastic in the area yep. right next to uh where you get to probably about the seventh lace hole i'm gonna say maybe six mm -hmm. lace holes in one area and it's mm -hmm. just all flexibility so you can yep. move still but if you yep. tighten it up you still could get the support for the achilles yep. that you want. Yep. that's why those shoes are so easy to chop down because yep. all you had to do is chop it down and then re-sew it into itself and it, yep. it was good but that sneaker man and even when you talk about the lows the only thing i did not like whether it was the 10 the nine or the 10 the EMs didn't really do it for me. The engineer okay. mesh. I wasn't a big fan of the engineer mesh. Uh, at that time, I'm gonna be honest with you. If it was Flyknit, I was copping though. I'm sorry, Flyknit trainers, yes. Flyknit racers. Oh, yeah. I time. was a Flyknit guy, guy. Yes. So like yeah. that EM was like, yeah, get it, but uh, yeah. not for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. No, yeah. The the, the high the high was great, and and like even like. They continue the storytelling because if you look at the the side where he tore his Achilles and it has those three those four marks and that's mm -hmm. for you know how many stitches and how many spools of stitching that he needed to repair it. Yep. So they still they still kept the storytelling intact. The colorways were still good. Telling the stories. model was still good. The <laughs> EM they, they 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 was using the EM to really kind of like um uh, be able to to have full access and full range of the colorways and the designs they can do in the shoe. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of people who, who have mixed emotions or mixed feelings about them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like, I mean, one nine that I can think of, and what is it? The, excuse me. Is it the China or the year to drag the all red, China. gold and the black China? China? Yep. I love those. Those are one of my favorite. They're know? beautiful. They are. Yeah. They are beautiful. It's just when I look at, a lot of them. The yeah, East I mean, at least, at least, elites, elites, those fly nets are just hit different. I mean, I, that, I, like that Beethoven, the Moonwalkers, the moon oh walker, my yeah. gosh, bro. That was an that was like, an era. That was an era, bro. That was an era. And then, like, like I said on Complex, you're talking about that was an era where, like, bro, people were literally getting access or, you know, were privy to when restocks were coming to Kobe, you know, that fly knit. And they were, bro, they were reselling Nike ID. Bro, Nike ID yeah. Kobe nines were reselling, bro, for like $500, bro. Yeah, that Mamba moments where he passed uh, uh, Jordan, Jordan all time. Yeah. Which, hey, look, man, being honest, that's probably the only Timberwolves game I watched that season. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, for sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Him passing Colt, had passing yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was, it was special. It probably would have happened during the nine. Obviously, yeah. he didn't play that many games, but. Yeah, it was special. Or during the eight, I should say it probably would. No, 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 it would have happened during the nine. No, it was on pace to happen during the nine, but still, yeah. like, it was special. It was, it was special. Um, and shoot, it, it, that's another time, right? It's 10 30, 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday when that happened, and you had to rush to Nike ID to make the uh yep, yep, moment because yep, they only get yep, it available, yep. I think, during halftime or, or, yep. or right after you hit the free throw until the end yep. of halftime. Yep, yeah, yep. you had, yeah. Yep had to rush over there and yep. you know the 10 um i don't really have too many memories of saying he didn't play much in them i did like a lot of the pe's um oh yeah oh yeah the, the i can remember specifically uh when he played against lebron um that second to last time he had a gray with yellow that he used to wear a lot actually that season mm -hmm. that gray hot top with a yellow and the black mm -hmm. swoops. yep 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 that was again his PEs were colorways that you can go in the store and get something very similar. Like, yo, Cole was still Cole was probably the last one who was wearing his team's colors as PEs. Yeah, like yeah. guys were venturing yeah. out, but he yeah. was going nuclear. Yep, at that time yep. and the ten always reminds me of PEs, but also Nike ID. How you talked about the five? I was buying Kobe ten P, Kobe tens on Nike ID. Uh -huh. I have a few of the multicolor fly nets. I got just some other joints I made. Like just, I was guilty of making a Yeezy colorway at one point. I did. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Did. I did. I did. I made a Yeezy. I did. But you know, at that time, man, that ten for Nike ID was like for sure. It. For sure. Yeah. For sure. They even redid a Grinch. Remember when they re-released the Grinch? Yep. 
yep. on uh, Nike ID. Yep, yep. Which I hate everybody I had them. Yep, yep, yep. I hated I missed those, man. But the 10, was there anything that stood out to you about the 10? Uh, probably the same things that you said. The P, the PEs were a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. That's when, like, we kind of, like, the NBA kind of just started getting to really, like, um, we started to see them release their restraints slightly mm-hmm. on what you could wear, what you couldn't wear, when you could wear, and things like that. So you started to see people get a little bit more creative um, in terms of like, their their PEs and um, what they were wearing on the court that wasn't necessarily uniform. Right. Um, another thing is um, just still seeing him trying to, you know, innovate still, even like kind of bizarre. Like we know like he ain't the same Kobe he got injured. He's still trying to find his way, but he's still competing, trying to get a title. But still seeing like the evolution between the nine and the ten. That was that was the thing too. Um, mm-hmm. You know the, the differences between the nine and the ten. Um, but him still staying high, not you know not going low, not going low. Like you know he came out with a high, um, but it's still offering those low top versions to still say like, hey, like this is still me. I'm still the low top guy. Like um, right. there's a low top version. But mostly the colorways, bro. Um, that 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 gray and purple. I, like as soon as you said, I remember that very vividly. But I remember mm-hmm. the um, that all yellow high with the black check. Those those I remember those releasing. Um, I remember that. What is it? I think it was a red blue a red and blue pair that was a high. I remember that releasing. Yep. Um, I'm just trying to remember all the color. It was a lot of colorways that released, bro. I remember Chris, so for me, the one that was the banger was the Christmas low. The five yeah. golden rings oh, yeah. tied yeah. into the championships. Yep. And yep. it was like, man. and I remember being disappointed because he didn't wear it on Christmas. Yeah, I remember. Because he opted, he wore the white and purple. Um, and I think it was yep. like an icy white and purple or something like that. Yep. I but it was that. like, man, because I remember Jordan Clarkson wore, wore the Grinches. Yep. And I I never forgot, I was at my mom's house during Christmas in Atlanta. And I went to the world famous Lennox Mall. Okay. And okay. again, this is before everybody was Kobe crazy. It was me and one other person out there. Okay. And Nike Lennox announced at like 11 p.m. that they were releasing the Kobe at Lennox the next day, which was always stupid that Nike did. <laughs> releasing Christmas sneakers after yeah. Christmas yeah. was so dumb yeah. to me. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. Well, regardless, too. I got up. My mom lived near uh near the airport, and I drove all the way up to Buckhead. If you ever been to Atlanta, that's a little hike. Yeah. All the way up to Buckhead at seven in the morning. Got in line, and they were like, "What y'all y'all here for the restock?" Because I think they had restocked like the seventy two and ten uh mm-hmm. Jordan Elevens uh, at that time. Yeah. yeah. So I out there, I was like, "No, nah, I'm here for the Kobe's." He was like, "Kobe's." I'm like, come on in. They let me in. <laughs> <laughs> they were out there for the uh, 72 and teams. Like, yep. let me get you out the way real quick, man. So let me in. I went in, copped them, got the little shirt that went with it and stuff, and I was out the door. Yep. But that, the craftsmanship again on the tens was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. And then we get to the final season, and um, he played more than he, than, than he did the last few seasons, but we got yeah. to see things like, you know, that eleven elite, it's it's up there for me. Um, yeah, yeah. The the uh, Black History Months are very very. Mm-hmm. God, I love that Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Um, eleven elite, but um, the the All Star Game. I had if there was no other sneaker I was getting out of that run, I had to get his last All Star yeah. Game. No question. Yeah, yeah no question. for sure, I had for to. sure. I had so I got those. I got I got a few of the elevens, and then yeah. of course um, the night that he retired, the Mamba moments, um, you know, or the Mamba day, I should say. We all we all made pairs and got pairs. Yeah, Every last yeah. One of us made yeah. Pairs. yeah, yeah. It was it was the time, dog. I I, I had. Sure. I, what, did you get the uh, the fade to black, the elites, the the black one? Have do you have any of the fade to black packs? I don't have the eleven. Okay. But you have everything else. Yeah, I don't okay. have the, the eleven. The eleven. To be honest, I, I didn't think I, I underestimated how hard it was going to be. I did too. And to be honest, I was fo- I was supposed to be at the game. So there's another t- story that I guess I've told or I I like to tell. Yeah, yeah. By all means. I moved from South Jersey to North Jersey, so I moved close. I moved actually moved closer to Newark. I heard you say your dad's from Newark. Uh-huh. 
I actually was working in Newark at University Hospital. And I had just started the job there. And Kobe announced that he was retiring. And my wife was like, we got to get you to the game. So I'm like, yo, I'm like, they're not going to let me go to the game. I'm like, like, I'm like, I wish, but I'm like, nah, like, and the, the, as we got closer to the game, my manager, we had got a new manager, like in the middle of me transitioning. And she was like, yo, I hear that, uh, you like, you're in the sneakers and everything. I'm like, yeah, I like sneakers. I heard you like Kobe, you're a big Kobe fan. I'm like, she's like, are you going to the game? I'm like, nah. I'm like, I didn't think I was gonna let me get let let me get off. She's like, I will let you get off. I'm like, yeah. She's like, if you need off, I'm like, you're lying, bro. I go home. I tell my oh. so, so we start scrambling to get tickets. And at that point, it was just too. It was. Too, oh, it was, it was cooked, too far bro. gone. It was too it far was gone. Yeah, it was, it was too cooked. Far gone. The yeah, day that he announced gone. it, bro, that yeah. Utah game, I think tickets were like seventy six dollars. Yeah. Uh, the day before. The day he announced it, uh, just to be in the building and change the air conditioning units on the roof was three thousand dollars. Literally, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was nuts. It was. Nuts. Oh man, it was bad. I, yeah, it was bad. But that eleven, um, it was special. It, it was for special sure. for sure. It was special man, sure. it was it was real special. And that eleven elite man, or the eleven, um, uh. What do you call it? The the uh the the final game, the Mamba Day, man. I really did underestimate as well because we had a um we had a Nike open up. Uh, they redid the Miami Nike Town. They turned Nike Town into Nike Miami. Okay. And they had the fade to black pack. So, I got a uh, I got the Hyper Dunk. And I got the Kobe four. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Hyper Dunk and the Kobe 4. And I think the Kobe 2 is. I have to go look, but either way. Um, so I got, I got, no, not the two. I got the Hyper Dunk and the Kobe 4. Okay. So um, either way, I, I'm thinking, because it was a walk in the park to get those. <laughs> like, shoot, they're all black Kobe's. Nobody's really going to be checking. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. Was bad. Was bad. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, man, I'm happy with what I got with the with the uh with the Mamba Day, the engine yeah. ones. I'm yep, happy yep, with. Yep. You know what you going to do, right? I mean, yeah. I would love to get a pair of the black one, but I just for sure, for sure. Wait. Um, before we get out of here, I wanna I wanna uh ask, what are your thoughts? Um, what were your thoughts when you heard Protro? Because you know, when they when they talked about it, one there was rumors that the Kobe line was ending in general. Yeah, um, it went to the ads and, and yeah, yep. they were good for for uh, AAU, but they weren't really hitting casually. But then yeah. we're going into All Star 2018, and Kobe says, "Okay, I want to introduce something different." Um, yeah. As a basketball player, were you still playing at that time? No, I was coaching mostly. Okay. I was playing casually. Matter of fact, I'm I'm lying. I was in a I was in I was playing in a Filipino league in my um in my neighborhood. Shout, shout out to my friend. I got a friend named Mark, uh Hyper Dunks 24, one of my good friends. My man, Mark, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah so um, he <laughs> yeah. introduced me. He introduced me to a Filipino league. Yeah. Uh and that was like literally like down the street from my house. I was playing in that. When okay. they uh, pretty much when that news came out, but my you know my initial thoughts was kind of like, you know, if you know Kobe and you really like like know him, you know like he obsesses over getting better. Yeah. And I guess my mindset was kind of like, bro, like, how do you how do you make these shoes better? I mean, I, I guess my well, uh, let me backtrack. I guess first I was kind of like, what is a pro troll? Like, like I'm like, is this just a ro- a, a retro that he's just putting a, like a different name to it? I'm like, what I is was very name? scared before I saw him. I'm not going to lie to you. So <laughs> that was my initial. My initial was kind of like, what is a pro troll? I'm like, what is mm-hmm. that? Like, what the hell is that? But then when, when he kind of broke it down, it was like performance retro. What I was like, I'm like, bro, how do you make these shoes? I'm like, how do you make these shoes that are already perfect? Uh-oh. How do you make them better? Like, I'm like, I'm like, crazy. what is that? Like, what is this? Bro. Um, <laughs> I thought we were getting Flywire or, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, Flywire Kobe ones. I was like, 
Yeah. Oh. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I saw them, and they looked the same. Yeah. But they were they did play there. I said, okay. Cool. Yeah. We, we, yep. 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 <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. And I had a friend of mine who was in All Star in L.A. Shout out to Sheed, bro. I love you, bro. He um went to All Star L.A. Mm-hmm. And, and they were gonna do the undefeated pack, of course. Mm. And they had also released the Dell Souls. Okay. Or the, I'm sorry, the mate, the maze, the black yep, maze. The maze, the Not maze. Del, I mean, eventually they became Dell Souls. Yeah, yeah. So we couldn't get the undefeated pack, but um he was able to get the maze color. He was like, yo, bro, they got him if you want them. I was like, absolutely, I'm sending it right away. Now, now we have a cash app and stuff. So I'm like, yo, pew, I appreciate it. <laughs> we're good. But plus, this is like like we were in each other's wedding. So it's my man. My man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we good. So he copped them, brought them back to Florida because nobody out here had the Pro Tools because Pro Tools were stupid limited. Yeah. Like it, it was a tester yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, to be honest with you, people weren't really buying them like that. Like, yeah. They, yeah. It was a tester. Word. So my birthday comes around in April. And my boys call me over and they're like, yo, man, uh, we want to, you know what I'm saying? We got you a cake. Like, All right, best. We're going to play 2K. And it was during the playoffs. So I'm, I'm coming, I'm getting off work at 11 o'clock at night because I was working um in, in hotels at the time. So I'm off mm-hmm. work at 11 o'clock at night, bro. I get there, hanging out, and all of a sudden, one of my boys comes out with a box. He's like, yo, man, happy birthday, bro. I said, man, I appreciate it, bro. He's like, you going to open it? I was like, yeah, I'll open it now because I was going to open it when I got home. I opened it, and I seen this black Kobe box with, like, the logo. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, how do I tell them I already got these? Right? <laughs> yeah. Daryl, I didn't have these. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the box and it was the camo undefeated ones. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, my God. oh. That's fire. I said, yo, That's fire. what? That's fine. Oh, they, they got because they were like, yo, we said we we're gonna do a limit. Because everybody pitched in, like, we're gonna do a limit of six hundred dollars or okay. whatever. And it's because pretty much like a group of us who's like a hundred dollars a person, no yeah. more than that. And they got me the undefeated coach. That's fire. Bro, That's fire. you talking about a grown man? I boo who cried, bro. That's Cause fire. like I, I bro, I was I was so happy. Like I was like, nah, bro, y'all really love me, bro. Like, this is That's crazy. Fire. That's so they fire. bought me the uh they bought me the pro shows, bro. And uh, That's fire. Yeah, man. Um, you know, kind of going to that. What's your thoughts on Kobe's relationship with undefeated? Um, I think he didn't miss personally. Yeah, Not- nah. I don't think I don't think I, I think he didn't miss. Um, and I think that was like I think that was like the perfect relationship, just like you know, West Coast, you know, brand um meets Kobe, West Coast, you know, on the Lakers. And I, I think they really just kind of dominated over the years, you know. To be honest, it would have been nice to see them collaborate a little bit more than than, than we saw them collaborate. Mm-hmm. Um I guess you know if if that would have happened, we could have possibly ran the risk of like colors that would have been lackluster, lackluster or not received as well. Right, but right. I'm grateful for the you know the product that they put out. I think it's been I think it's everything that they've touched has been you know phenomenal. I I, I have a, I don't have any complaints on my end, <laughs> um, and I feel like all their releases, you know, they have a nice amount of stock every single time. Um, you know, moving the box. Like, I didn't hit on that pack that dropped during COVID, but a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people that I know, kind of hit. Like, it, it wasn't a lot of people that did not hit, especially if you had some type of his like purchase history with them. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I I loved what they did with Kobe and the collaborations and the product that they made, and I hope you know like. As we see in these pro trolls come, I'm hoping we see more, and I hope they get to collaborate a little bit more. Because you know, since his passing, we've seen a couple more, and we've seen them do different like pro trolls. Like you know, Kuzma had his um like his Laker oh. colorway, which I love. You, you know, um they done Devin Booker, they done Giannis. So hopefully, yeah. you know, we get to see um that more. And you know, what I've heard, I guess, is another bombshells a couple more bomb a couple more bombshells to come but i believe from my understanding we're going to actually see and 
what's going to come to fruition is the actual um, Team Kobe, which is like a Team Jordan. So we're going to actually see a Team Kobe. So um, hopefully we see that soon. And, you know, the possibilities are endless once we get there. Um, and I have like, a feeling I know who will be on that team. Oh, yeah, for sure. We definitely got some usual suspects. Yeah. And um, it's just going to be interesting. So, like, and, like, you know, the pro trolls, you know, coming out more, you know, we're out of the woods of the unknown. So, we, we know, like, the, the contract is resigned. Mm-hmm. Shoes are coming. So, we're not, like, in, like, 2020, 2021, we're, like, all right, we're going to get more shoes. What's going on? What's, you know, like, the shoes are coming. They're starting to feel a little bit easier to obtain. Yeah, everybody's still wearing them. Everybody's loving them. Everybody's enjoying them. So hopefully, undefeated can kind of get integrated, and you know, inter intertwined with with that, and they can kind of get you know, build a re- rebuild a rapport and kind of start releasing more and introducing the new. Because you know, they, they, a lot of people are on their way out. So like, Giannis has his own signature now, so he won't. He I don't see a reason for him getting one. Kuzma's not on the Lakers, and he's not the same Kuzma he was, so he wouldn't be getting one. The Rosen's on his way out, but you know you can start to see like uh, Tyrese Halliburton. You know, hopefully he, you know, hopefully he gets one. You know, uh, Caitlin Clark. You know, she may get one. Um, hopefully, you know, right, maybe right before her signature. I mean, for all we know, bro, her her signature could be a Kobe. I mean, like the po- possibilities are endless of what what can yep. be or what will be. Um, Buddy, you know, Buddy Hill, he, you know, maybe he'll get a retail. You know, he's had tons of P's. Maybe he'll get a retail PE. Somebody I think could do well, Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo. They're big Kobe guys. You got, yep, you got those two guys right there. So, like, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see mm-hmm. what they do and, you know, what undefeated can, you know, bring to the table. Um, so it's going to be interesting, bro. And it's, it's so, you know, a lot of these things with uh, Bob and Kobe – there's so many stories that they haven't told. Oh my god! He was so big on storytelling, but there's so many stories he, they haven't even they haven't even told. Like a lot of it is is just Mamba moments, girl, that like like a lot of basic elementary things. When you get into like other other things, like deeper than you know, deeper into you know his story and like the reason behind why he played injured or the games that he played injured, the t- you know the streak of like nine straight 40 plus games and the 50 point games and the 60 point games if they, if they yep. decide to pro tro the amnesty you know pro tro the amnesty that that's the color we, we never got it. everybody mm-hmm. wants there's so many different avenues and stores they can tell if they decide to really kind of get into their bag and really trying to be the nike from that you know the glory days so so it's gonna be it's interesting why i'm such a fan of this kobe five that's releasing the x-ray yeah. for sure um, I don't really want to touch the other comp, the other reason as to why people think they shouldn't release. I think it kind of you can kind of understand why. But yeah. the flip side of that, and I think the positive and what they're going for is that X-ray T, that X-ray thing was so iconic, number one. For sure, for sure. And then sure. him being such a storyteller on playing through injuries and stuff like that, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Um it's a colorway I think that would have released regardless. Yeah. Um, and I think that when you look at it, it's another way again to tell the story of resiliency. He was hurt during that finals. Yeah. Played through injury during that. And everybody plays through injury. I don't want to overstate it. Like he's the only athlete too, but just what that was at that time, you know, yeah. What I would like to see also, I'm going to be honest. I, I think LeBron, especially being who he is now, I would like to see a. I like to see something of Lil Dez being brought again because we talk about Lil Penny. Lil Dez was also for, for sure. those three uh the puppets. For sure. Oh man, sure. the puppet commercials. Um yeah. uh, um, LeBron, have you seen my my rings, my shiny rings? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yep. LeBron's like, yeah, bro, you're, you're a champion. We get it, bro. But yep. I mean, puppet commercials. Um, the, again, the little dance thing. Like, shoot, when we were for like we had little dance tees. Um, yep. yep. There's so many stories that could be told with this, and I think that that's the main thing is Kobe told stories throughout his basketball career. And um, as we wrap up, you know, I think 
what makes you appreciate Kobe the most is how detail oriented, how meticulous uh, yep. he is. Um, yep. I want to end this on a positive note. In uh, somewhere that's not traditional for these conversations to go, you spoke on it a little bit. And um, if you can, if not, it's okay. How, how uh, grateful and how blessed is it to have a spouse that supports what we do? Because I know my wife is a big proponent of that. She tried to get me in LA as well. Um, how, how as a man does that feel to, or, or, or can you go into whatever details you can just of having that kind of partner that understands that passion and just like makes it okay? Because a lot of guys who are married, I'm be honest, they're not blessed as we are to have spouses For that sure. like really see us as friends. And For like sure. understand, like my friend is passionate about this. So I'm gonna mm. so just if you could speak to that a little bit because you know it, it's a beautiful thing to have, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I, I've been blessed and, and highly favored, to be honest, all of my life because I, I've never I've never dated a person who had who's had an issue. I mean, before I graduated high school, I had 100 pairs of sneakers. Before I turned 24, I had 400 pairs of sneakers and was in the press of my, the, 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 the newspaper in my city. I never had a girlfriend who ever was like, nah. When I, yeah. when I you know, got married, met my wife, got engaged, got married, she never was like, yo, like, this is too much. Or like, yo, yo, what's going on? Like... To be honest, there's times where bro, I'm really like, I'm going to pass on these. I think I'm good. And she'd be quick to be like, no, you better get them because I don't want to hear next year when you're like, yo, I should have got them and now they five. She's kind of like, she like yo, you better get these now because I don't want to yep. hear you complaining. Bro, then there's quick, there's times where I may be at work, she'll screenshot me something from the things like, yo, like, make sure I got these in my size. I need these. Like, my wife got a collection too. I got, my wife probably got 120 pairs of shoes. She got Kobe's. Come on, got man. Your ends, bro. See, and like, whatever, whatever it is, bro. Like, if like, so I was in one of the first like uh, consumer, one of the first consumer features on sneakers app. What do you got? I was on that before mm -hmm. they did. What do you got? They did another. They did another one. I can't think of the name of, it, but I was on it, and they wanted me to talk about. They they emailed me and asked me if my interest about showing my LeBrons and my Kyrie's. I was like, well, I got a crazy Kobe collection. Can I do that? And they was like, yeah. And they came and they they came to my house and she we both had like important things that we bro. She canceled her all her stuff and was like, yo, like we gonna get the house clean. We gonna get the sneaker room. Bro, I got a whole bedroom in my house. I don't yeah. got a closet, bro. I got to literally we bought a house with a with a bedroom. The entire bedroom has nothing but sneakers in it. We got the whole thing straightened up for Nike to come to the house, bro. It, like literally any if i like it she love it bro anything that sneakers bro she supported to a t uh i remember one time i don't think i don't think i ever said this at any anywhere um bro i invited kobe to my wedding before like she wrote the, she wrote like a letter to him and the invite to him there's one time we was trying to like i forgot i was trying to do something with kobe or trying to just kind of like tell him like yo like I, i'm your biggest fan i got all these shoes Bro, we wrote this freaking like letter. Bro, we wrote, bro, I wrote a letter to Kobe. I wrote a letter to the Lakers, and I wrote a letter to like Erica Var, bro, kind of like just thanking them. Yeah. Bro, she went and got like yellow printer paper. We wrote these letters, bro. We got like uh, purple envelopes, bro. Like we did it up all crazy. We sent one to like Kobe's house. We sent one to Nike, and we sent one to like Lakers like practice facility, bro. We. And this was all like her idea type shit, bro. My wife, like, That's she, hard. when I say you, she supports you, bro. That's really like an understatement, bro. Like whatever, whatever sneaker related thing, bro. If I'm like, y'all gotta go camp out. Like I camped out for girl dads. I'm like, y'all gotta camp out. Like I can't. I think it was Dang, like the school I did night. <laughs> she was like, bro. All right, she, they ain't coming her size, but she was like, all right, go ahead, do your thing, bro. I camped out. Like I think I camped out twice, two different places. So like. Yeah, she 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 supports that joint to a T, bro. She don't she don't give me no flack, no pushback, nothing. I have yeah. zero issues. Yeah, I, I feel you. And, and honestly, a partner like that that supports you, it honestly makes you whatever she got going on. I'm with it. Hey, where we go? Where we at? Where we need to be? Facts. Um, Facts. Um, it's yeah, Facts. I, I'm with you, bro. It's the best thing in the world to have that partner. Facts. Um, 
especially as men and as black men on top of that, like exactly. to 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 have you know somebody that looks like you and and, and can mm-hmm. understand your passions and, and you know y'all got a beautiful family man and now you know you do to school and stuff like that she right. was crazy I, bro i was thinking about how blessed i was today man just like we took my daughter to go uh look at a school for her bro and i was just like damn bro like we really made a life together like it's all awesome. and like i don't feel miserable like like you know what i'm saying like she doesn't understand my passions and stuff like that like so it's like to hear that bro i i definitely think that people don't speak on that enough yeah. um, so i definitely want to talk about that as we close out look that's a perfect way to me that we can close this out um just saying you know thank you to those that loved us and let us do what we do man because it's Absolutely. easy to go out here and be and look you done been to camp house a lot of these dudes smell bad they look bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what i'm saying cool. like Facts. But we're blessed. We're blessed. Facts. And I think to even Facts. be able to do this and take the time out. So, you know, thank you to Miss G. We appreciate you uh, even to let them take the time out to do this. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and you know, just just in general, Daryl, I want to say thank you for coming through, um, sharing your passion of Kobe Bryant. This is easily my favorite deconstructor we've done. Like we've nice. done it all, we've broken it all down. Um, yeah, bro. Thank and, you for yeah. having me. I appreciate you, man. Absolutely, bro. I know we've been trying to set this up for a minute, but I thought, what better time than Kobe's yeah. birthday, Kobe for Day? Sure. Come on, man. Slay. This for is sure. it. So, for this sure. is the year, Kobe. Um, yeah. I'm going to put you on the hot seat on our way out. You're on vacation. You can only fit five pair in your suitcase. What are they? <laughs> oh, man. Bruce Lee, Kobe five. Okay. Nowadays, Girl Dad four. I love Girl Dad fours, man. It was just like I love those. Wow. Um, Bruce Lee five. Girl Dad. Did you change the laces? I didn't change them. Yeah, I, I, I want to fool with the arms. So I think I'm gonna mess around with the arms. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna I try. saw it on Nike I'm Talk. Doing. I had the swagger jacket, bro. I'm sorry. I saw it on NT. It was, it was hard. I had to take it. I'm gonna try. Yeah. Okay. Um, hyper dunk snake pool hyper dunks, taking those. Yep. Um, wow, this is tricky. Uh, what's another one I'm taking, bro? I'm probably taking chaos fives. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, probably chaos fives. Mm-hmm. If I'm going somewhere tropical, I'm probably bringing breast cancer sixes or fives. Oh, yes. Um, what's the honorable mention? Honorable mention, I'm bringing probably Lower Marion four fives, probably Lower Marion fives. That's the one for me, too. Five's the yeah. one for me, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going with your exact list. Uh, My honorable mention is Rice Sixes. Okay. I love those. Love the I love Rice Sixes. Rice love Sixes those. are my, are my honorable mention, but I'm going with okay. that exact list. Okay. Daryl, man, thank you so much. We're going to have your social media in the profile for everybody to follow you. Thank you for coming through, bro. I really, Anytime. really appreciate it, man. Anytime. Um, I definitely look forward to doing much more, man. We'll have we'll talk some basketball, talk some football later on down yeah. the line. Anytime, bro. I'm here anytime you need me. And you know, uh, if you need anything, man, I'm around the corner. So Absolutely, me, bro. bro. Right, talk bro. To you, man. I'm going to talk to you later. Take it easy, bro. All right. Thank you. All right. Later. All right. Right, all right, and there it is. That was our conversation with the man, the wonderful brother D, man. My guy Daryl, man, out of Jersey. Thank y'all so much for tapping in with us. Thank y'all for this uh spirit-filled episode of, of Deconstructed. My name is Earl, Earl91, Earl got soul. I'm uh thank y'all for tapping in. As y'all can see, this Kobe thing is serious. So we appreciate y'all. Until the next time, we out. Peace. Center. What a play! Oh, and finds Kobe. Kobe oh, elevating. And the foul. Well, how serious was that? Lakers, because of this man, Kobe Bryant, can take over. And he characterizes Dwight Howard. Long run out by Kobe Bryant. Oh! What did I just see? You saw what Kobe does best. Really got a dribble drive, change of direction by Bryant. Slam dunk. There will be no charge because the man's in that new painted imaginary circle. Woo! I think that's what the fans came to see. And you talk about elevation. 
chick, he went up to the rafters before he decided to put somebody on a poster.